character and that will affect our characters and the game. And five is all of that happens. All of those things happen, all of the chaos ensues. Um, so otherwise, I will hand over to the very lovely Hans. Oh, hi. Oh, hi, I am Hans. Thank you. I only show up because Alice calls me very lovely every time that I do. So um, thanks for being here. We're going to run a one shot for the Hickegaard that's back in time, uh, you know, early in our timeline. So it should be a lot of fun. Also, don't forget that Alice has a Patreon. You guys need to go check it out. I and I will hand it back earlier. over to her. I even remembered that earlier. Um, I actually did remember that earlier in Mal's game. I <laughs> didn't have to remember it. Apparently it's in once the info block that's on the screen. It's great. Yeah, yeah, it, it's just there. Um, yes, I'm Alice, um, also White Robert Pick, and I am playing Imogen. Um, Imogen will be much younger um, in this session. Um, you know who I am. So let's um, hop around and say hi to everyone else. My Twitch has crashed, so I'm about to try and find the order again. There we go. Uh, we'll say hello to uh, Josh M. Simmons. Um, where can we find you and who are you playing today? Uh, yeah, hey, I'm Josh. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, my username is Joshua M. Simons. That's my name. Easy enough. Uh, and I will be playing uh, Theta today, a uh, retired scoundrel who's gotten back into the game for some reason. What's your character's name again? Uh, tambourines. <laughs> you're right, you're right. <laughs> I was like, wait, <laughs> conspiracy number one. I was reading your uh, your name. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. Um, and then we're gonna hop over to Blue Box Pirate. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Uh, my name is Joel. You can find me online. I'm on Twitter at Blue Box Pirate. And that's pretty much all I do online. I'm a very private person or something like that. I don't know. Um, this is my online tabletop role-playing game debut. And thank you for having me. I am playing Theta. He is a stitch on the run. You uh, might have seen him. Maybe you were in a battlefield somewhere and he stitched you up in the past. Who knows? Wonderful. Thank you. And I will hand back to Hans. Okay. So we're playing the Hickegaard today, which is a scum and villainy campaign. And the great thing about scum and villainy is it's very easy. I say that now, and then when it true, proves to be untrue later on, you can just blame me. Um, but the basic premise of the game is we're gonna be able to just like go forward, play things as we go on. And um, what's the term I'm looking for? Kind of discover why we did what we did as we did, as we go on. That made sense in my mind. So we are starting today in an icy climate. It's cold. So much so that when you open the door to the local cantina, there is a frigid blast that comes in every time the door opens. It's accompanied by a lot of grunts and howls and angry <clears throat> xenological sounds as people uh, revolt, are upset, as people respond to the door being open and this freezing blast of cold air. The three of you don't have to worry about that right now because you're seated at a table with two identical individuals. They are each about five feet tall. Their little heads peek up just over the edge of this table. I mean, five feet tall is not that little. That's kind of mean that people were five feet tall. It's Sorry literally four inches um, <laughs> shorter than me. <laughs> think, thinking about that for a second. So uh, maybe not their little heads peeking up over the table. They're more like four feet tall. So there we go. That's much more appropriate. They're a light, like just slightly uh, blue color. And they have overlapping scales or carapace. To me, I'm thinking of like what we Americans call a roly-poly or a pill bug. They are very pill bug like and they have little antennae that flex like this. They also have little collars that modulate their voices so that they can be understood by human type individuals. And they're sitting here and explaining to you exactly why you are breaking into this ice palace here on the surface of the world Lithios, which is a remote ice world in I am now looking at the document, the IOTA system. So I will say those names as many times as possible. If you ever have to write something down in this game, please do it for your own free will and not because of the fact that you feel like you're going to get tested later on. Um, but they're explaining to you the contents of the ice palaces are important. And we need your assistance. You are all noted outlaws. 
And this is our opportunity to reclaim our rightful merchandise. Um, um, possessions, possessions. There's like some antenna twitching back and forth. They seem to be saying a lot of things they're not saying to you as they move these antennas constantly back and forth at one another. So let's do a pan shot, left to right. Who you are, what you look like, what winter outfit you're wearing, suitable for the planet Hoth, which we're calling Lithios, and what your drink of choice is in this crazy alien cantina. Um, and we're gonna start with Imogen because she's the established character, but also in a different mode. So what's up with Imogen this time? Um, Imogen is currently around 19, 20 years old. This is way before her, um, not way before her time meeting Kai, but a little bit before then. Um, she ordered the sort of the equivalent of a beer, but they got it wrong and they've given her this weird sort of pinky purple drink that keeps bubbling in a very disturbing kind of way. And she hasn't quite touched it yet, but she's stirring it with whatever bizarre vegetable they've um, put in the top of it. Um, she sort of sniffs it every now and then, but when it makes a noise at her, she sort of pushes it to the side. Um, she is in what can be a fixed sort as like a huge, heavy jumpsuit with a very, very high neck. It's um, a very pale in color. It looks very thick, very warm. Over the top is a white leather jacket with a hood, which she can effectively pull up, but also pull over. And you can see there's a clear screen um, sort of material in the hood so she can look through whilst being out in this sort of extreme weather. Um, also, these jumpsuits are very, very handy for hiding stuff in. Um, it looks to be fairly baggy. This is not like um, a very fitted sort of thing. It's cinched in at the waist to sort of keep it upright. Um, but there's also these very, very heavy duty boots where the snow is still sort of latched onto the side, like when you've come in from skiing and you have to knock them off and it doesn't all quite um, come off with those sort of, um, sort of the dirt and snow mixed in sort of coating her shoes. Her hair is not long here. It is a very, very short, almost um, wavy, bright red. It's, she could probably blend in outside if it wasn't for how bright her hair is, but she's very pale, very green eyes, bright red hair. And she's just, she's sort of glancing at everyone around her over to these, what I'm calling space wood lice and this awkward, bizarre drink that's in front of her. The individuals across from you have identified themselves as Zorm. Zorm. They are Zorm. <clears throat> this one is Zorm. That one is Zorm. <laughs> sort of like... Do they speak at the same time? No, they, they've been polite enough to not do that. They had kind okay. of a creepy, like, hotel twin moment at the very beginning, but now it's, they've been speaking Sort of at separately. the end of the corridor, like... <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, you got you had that moment, but now they've decided that that makes you uncomfortable, and they're speaking individually. Also, you've heard some. I don't know how likely it is to be true. the The banter at the Katina is the reason all the drinks are so unusual is because it's so cold. They can't have normal alcoholic drinks here. Hmm. Yeah, she's still not touching it. It's fizzing a lot. Yeah. So with that, let's move on to Joshua. Let's talk about how tambourines looks, what they're wearing, what they're drinking. Yeah, so uh, tambourines is um, an older uh, human male, um, probably uh, in his late 50s. Um, you can see that his hair is mostly gray. He's got a little bit of, of uh, a beard, um, also very gray. Um, he kind of looks like the original Dos Equis man, uh, if, if that gives you a mental image. Um, and so he's got this uh, uh, kind of a, a similar s jumpsuit on, um, but uh, on top of it, definitely a fashion statement. He's got a bomber jacket that adds absolutely no warmth, um, but um, is clearly, the point is he wants to keep his jacket visible um, for one reason or another. Um, he's also got a scarf, not that it's doing anything, it's kind of loosely around his neck. Um, uh, and uh, he he ordered a water, um, and so they've, they've just got a glass with a chunk of ice in it, um, and it's just he he can't drink it, but he's holding it, pretending that he can. Mm. 
All right, good stuff. Yeah, this big chunk of ice in the water, it's maybe something that's not, uh, maybe it's not liquid water. It's something else that's keeping it warm enough you can drink it. Mm. Mm, who knows? Something like that. It's, it's pretty easy for things to be ice cold in here. So let's move on now and finish up with Theta. Theta, uh, he's wearing a long, like a duster style coat, but it's thicker padded for winter weather with a furred hood that comes up over his head. He also has a scarf. It is longer than any scarf has any right to be. You see it wrapped around his head and like halfway around his chest and back and forth, just crossing his body. Uh, he does have a red undershirt that looks like medic scrubs. It's the uh, outfit of the hegemony medics. He tries to keep that hidden underneath his other clothing though. So the casual observer does not see where he's from. Uh, he would be drinking, uh, he was from Academy. He probably was a kind of a frat type guy. So he probably has two or three empty glasses in front of him already. Uh, the equivalent of like a Jack and Coke, whatever that might be. I think the version here is a bright purple with a green layer below it. And it just, it will not come together. There's some sort of, you know, problem with the, the temperature where the liquids just will not mix. Gotta so drink it fast, cool. huh? I mean, it's possible that would be better. It's one of those things, have you guys ever had a drink where you're not sure if drinking it better, or drinking it fast is better or worse? Full slugger? I mean, anything like that, right? <laughs> as long as we've all been there before, you can appreciate it. So, so these two Zorm have explained to you what they're hoping for, which is that you will go and retrieve their, they've decided on possessions. We need our, uh, not, not plural, we need our possession to be retrieved. Um, yes. Uh, did, did you have a, a name or are we not giving these, what, what was your name? Zorm. Zorm. Our name is Zorm. You're both. Okay, hi Zorm. Um, can do you have any uh, details on what it is we're actually looking for, other than our possession? You know, just for if we get in there, <laughs> there could be a lot of stuff in there. They pass you a little device, which is like a cell phone, and we know that in this universe, in universe, these are called pihones. Pihones. And <laughs> this pihone is a secure pihone. Um, when you get it, they tell you that it will transmit the information when you reach the target. If you find our position, if you reach inside of the container, push the button, and we will confirm you have the correct possession. She sort of slowly picks it up, very suspicious, but is like, okay, and just sort of pockets it. But easy, takes the guesswork out of it. I mean, okay, fine. Oh, that's <laughs> and sort of like sits back, pushes her glass, like the glass of whatever's gurgling in front of her away. Drink it. Oh, you're brave. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you prepared to, to do this this illegal mission now? Would you like more mild poisons before you go? Don't, don't, don't. Okay, first of all, don't say out loud illegal mission. Um, this is clearly their their yeah. antenna are twitching like this. Yeah, this is clearly very illegal. This is against all like, hegemony policies. Like, she's like, it would carry the highest of death penalties. I'm already hunted by the hegemony. What's more, um, more death penalty? I stress again, and this time she's just like, don't call it that. Um, we we're just not in the bar. You know, we understand the situation, but we don't want to share what is happening here. There's an important cutaway shot where they both look at each other and they both go like this a couple times and then they look back and they do this at you and then they go back and do this again. Uh, okay. I we will languages. no longer say illegal mission any longer. We will call it by a pseudonym. Job. I like that. Job acceptable. Yeah. Yeah, much yeah. better. Like, <laughs> the images look at the others like, I failed. Um, languages at school, so I don't actually know what I just told them. <laughs> uh, do we know more about this ice palace? Like where it's at, how it's, uh, what resistance we might meet? That's a great question. <clears throat> and that's really getting into an engagement role. So <clears throat> pardon me as I choke on my cacao nib. 
<laughs> the important thing that we now need to do is talk about, do you have anything else you want to get out of these Zorm and this encounter, or are we ready to do this job? What are you paying me in? <laughs> like, oh, that's a sort great of like question. holds up is like, yeah, hmm. um, this is great and all, um, but I don't do stuff like this for free. As you said, it's <laughs> and it's like mouthing the words highly illegal. Um, mm -hmm. It's like, you know, for, for um, compensation, you know, should something Of course, of course. And they both reach down and it takes both of them to carry this satchel up to the table and they put it down and you hear this heavy metallic thunk as it lands on the ground and the bag opens up like this. And there is enough like metallic bullion inside of this bag to have every person in this room swarm you right now and pick your bones clean. She quickly just closes it and is like, with with the other half payable upon your return with the asset, the property, the possession. That's a lot of dough. It's like, like a third of a ship in a bag right now. A third of a ship, so I could buy like half a ship. I mean, after this, maybe right. Okay. This is acceptable. Yeah, and like image is quite small, but she reaches across the table and pulls this forward. She's like it's a like this. foot and four inches bigger than these. <laughs> <laughs> you get that nice heavy like as it goes yeah. across the table it's great sort of like pulls it down trying to make sure no one else in this bar actually looks towards them i would say this is acceptable and another like another bag when we get back right we will pay the same amount upon your return with the possessions what exactly is the possession? When you reach the container the possession is in, push the pihon button and we will confirm the cargo. It is again the highest of death penalties if you are caught. Uh, okay. <laughs> like, and again, kidding, just... it seems unwise. And are you doing this because of the legality problems or? Correct. Okay, just check. Um, let's ask a practical question. What does the container look like? It is very large. It will require you to have your own vessel in order to extract the container. Okay. Can any of you fly an ice speeder? I would have stolen one probably as i arrived being um, a pilot they hold up they, they have a keychain and on the keychain there is a flip-flop and then the key to a spaceship it's a, a oh. miniature novelty flip-flop of course i'll just take that okay thank you thank you thank you i used to have one of these <laughs> like sort of like puts it um sort of clenches it in her hand she's not putting it in her po in her pocket she's keeping hold of it well um Zorm and sort of Zorm. like gestures. Hello, yes, Zorm. Um, we will be back. I assume you have given us the coordinates. They are uploaded to your P homes. P homes, yes, of course they are. Hmm. We'll we, we'll go. We'll go. Um, she sort of looks to. Um, she isn't that big, but she looks to one of you as like to grab the bag because it'd be far too obvious if she's carrying it. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll carry the um, body. That doesn't help. <laughs> it's just like, this is still illegal. It's like, okay, just travel gear, you know, winter gear. Yeah. Tools, right. like anything, but body. Yeah. Oh, my God, not something. Well, uh, thank you, friend Zorms. We will be off on our delivery mission and sort of starts to stat like rise from the this booth zorm's covering the drinks right zorm has the drinks covered yes <sighs> ah um, excellent and where is it uh parked sorry he sort of holds up the keys it is parked in the main parking lot the main parking lot okay the flip-flop if you depress the button it will emit the alarm Fab. Okay, yep. I have one of these a year ago. Um, I'm gonna, um, let's go. And she probably uh, stands up um, and she'll head towards the door. But as she's going, so she's slowly pulling that hood over 
Um, and there's like this almost like a glowing seal around the top of the hood, which would then seal the warm air in. Almost like a wetsuit kind of thing to keep a hot mm. air in. It's incredibly cold outside. I think we're actually on like the Kelvin scale. It's so cold outside where Ooh. it's like nitrogen freezes here in the atmosphere. So as you walk outside, if you were not wearing all of your protective gear, you would now be dead. So no. <laughs> yay, you're not that yeah. perfect. Yeah. Bundle up. Yeah, got it's these like, massive gloves on, like they're ridiculous. She's trying to like hold the keys, <laughs> like it's, it's that perfect. kind of. Yeah, this <laughs> delicate gloves. little flip flop key. Mm -hmm. So this spaceship is essentially like someone took a 1950s rocket and laid it down on its side and enforced it with as much insulation as possible. So you're looking at something that's roughly an oval in cross section or like an ellipses in cross section, and it is just and 90% insulation around a rocket engine that is going to shoot you forward across the surface of this planet. That sounds uh, super like safe. <laughs> that's right. There's a door you can go in and on the side, and that's about it for features. You have almost nothing to talk about here. Um, inside, though, it's been decorated in a very homey, warm style. There are 15 space heaters all plugged into the same power strip. And there is a series of paper palm tree type decorations and a little bit of like a tiki bar, like bamboo border around the cockpits, uh, the cockpit. Yeah. I want this shit. <laughs> yeah, there's there's no like little hula girl on the front, but there's a little circle area where it looks like something has been removed from the dash, like something that had a suction cup has now been plucked off. So that's what you've got to deal with. Probably one of those solar powered dancing flowers. <laughs> Very she's well like, could be. To open yeah. it, she's had to like, because of how big her gloves are, she's sort of like <laughs> trying to get it open until it finally beeps. That's honestly the most dangerous part of this mission is standing outside trying to open the ship before you freeze to death. <laughs> yeah, like we're That's probably time. it right there. <laughs> and as soon as it opens, she sort of does a little bit of all aboard. So you are now in the spaceship. And we're going to now do kind of like a time skip, go out of game time thing. If you look in the roll 20, I've pulled open the handout for plan types. What we need to do is we need to agree on an engagement for how you're going to get this container in this ice palace. So there are six types of plan, assault, deception, infiltration, mystic, social, and transport. You have the ship, so you can go anywhere, but that doesn't imply a certain approach you all have to decide what you want to do to make this happen. So please talk amongst yourselves, in game, out of game, however you prefer, to determine what kind of plan you want to enact. Um, Imogen sort of looks to all of them. He's like, well, I'm mainly just a pilot, so I can get us there, but we, I, in my head here, we see a few. I see a few options. We can either try and do this as stealthily as possible. Um, is the outer of the ship white, or is it like very colorful? If there's a tiki bar on the inside, um, the outside of the ship is totally Spartan, and it's mostly that like frost blasted white with some exposed metal. Mm. And um, it's like we can either approach as stealthily as possible and break in um or we could um i'm guessing arrive as a delivery service that's a good idea um you know get I... in and have a look around just drop some stuff off if we're a delivery service what are we delivering um she sort of looks around if there's if there's like a tiki bar um is there like enough for a party here like enough alcohol or like a a blow up palm tree or something here's the great part about how scum and villainy works if you want to take something in your load if you want to say something exists we can have something exist hmm. so when we get to the point where you're actually enacting the plan you tell me what stuff you did and if it really requires like a big stretch it would be a strain cost but if it's something like stuff that's in your tiki bar yeah you got that hmm. I feel like so so a con that always works for me is like um, pest control, right? You go in, and say, "Oh, I hear there's some. It's time for your, you know, annual pest inspection." Um, that always ah. that always works for me. And then we get to go in, look around, poke around, and no one really wants to be there when you're like health and safety. Exactly, exactly. I like that idea, but let me propose an alternate. Okay. Have you seen Thor: Dark World when they do? We need help. You could be my patient. We need their facilities or else you're going to die. 
I'm a doctor. You can trust me. You know, um, I I honestly haven't watched those old Marvel movies. The newer <laughs> ones, I, I like a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> my concern about that is is that it sounds like there's only two people, and we have a crew of three. Well, we pilot. I'm a doctor. I can't drive, and you're the sick patient. Right. I feel like we need all hands on deck if we're going to try to get in and get out with something large enough that we need uh, an ice speeder to carry it. I, I start looking through, like, you know, like, um, if they've got lots of, like, decorations and things like that, I would like to find, um, <laughs> I don't know how much of a stretch this is, like, um, the equivalent of space police tape or some of these like different mm. decorations or she wants to make something out of some of the um, banners. It's like, if we do health and safety, we can quarantine the thing. That's a good idea. I like it. And if there's like a, you know, the um, freshly mopped floor signs, I'd like to take those with me as well. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure See, we could pick some up. When, <laughs> when we get to the point of you making the engagement roll, however well it goes, we'll explain what equipment you had. Mm. Mm. I feel like we could get some matching jumpsuits and like a large canister. It could be empty for all I care, but something that looks like, you know, it's important, contains some kind of toxic chemical. Uh, that way, so, you know, we look like we mean business. Yeah. So what I'm getting from all of you is it sounds like you really want to do a deception, hands yes. down for your plan type. Okay. Yes. <laughs> no disagreements there. It is You're definitely storm deception. The castle. <laughs> Right. So you're talking about going into a restricted area that is an ice palace, and that's no problem at all. You're going to need to make an engagement roll. The way we are doing the engagement roll, which I am reading right now because I'm totally prepared for this game. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm like so close, I'm sure. There we go. Okay. So let's talk about the operation. Number one, is it particularly bold or daring? I would say yes, because we did discuss this is the highest level of death penalty. So we started with one die, we're on two. Is it overly complex or contingent on many factors? I'm going to be generous and say no. Uh, yeah. Does the plan's detail expose a vulnerability of the target or hit them where they're weakest? I don't, I don't think that they're especially weak against deceptions of health and safety. I think that's going to be like average. Sure. And is it strongest against this approach or do they have particularly defenses or special preparations? No. Can any of your friends or contacts provide aid or insight for this operation? Does anybody have a friend or a contact that's on their sheet that they think is particularly relevant? This is where you get to phone a friend for an extra yeah. guy. Hmm. That's really sad. I have no friends right now. <laughs> All my friends are here in the rocket with me. Yeah, you guys have plus minuses on the character sheet, like yeah. a, a, an arrow up and arrow down. <clears throat> and if one of those people was somehow relevant to you, you could use them. You know, I've, uh, I know a guy. I don't know if, if he, he could help us. Um, his name is Rin. He's, uh, we used to, to smuggle things back in the day. Um, I feel like he might um, have the hookup on this one. Okay. So you guys are at three dice. That's a ton of dice. I think that's very good. And are there other elements you want to consider? I think otherwise we're doing okay. Now, this is going to be an important role because we're making a fortune roll that's going to determine if you are in a risky, controlled, or desperate position when you start this. Risky is your default position in this game because everything in real life is risky. A controlled position is super great and you will love it. A desperate position is not good and you will not enjoy yourself as much while doing this. So there's a character sheet. If you look all the way on the right, and then you keep scrolling down past bonus dice and gambits and friends and enemies, it says roll fortune. And one of you gets the privilege of rolling fortune with three dice. Who would you like to do? I think it's reasonable to do a nod it and touch your nose or something, but however you guys want to do it. Well, that's fine. That worked out perfect. <laughs> that works. Okay, so Joshua, you're going to be rolling three dice on this okay. roll fortune. And you are responsible for everybody's fate and fortune, of course. <laughs> Perfect. That's what I always wanted. Um, all right. Number so four, let's five, just... six is success, and less is bad. Yes. All righty. Um, number of dice is three. You said. That's right. All right. Um, and do I put anything in the notes? I don't think so. 
Okay, we'll just submit and see what happens. Okay, you got a five. Five's pretty good. So you're staying in this risky position. You didn't, oh, actually, let me check. Engagement roll. You got a five, it's a mixed result. So yeah, I was right. You're in a, you're in a risky position. That's not that bad. That's where you were before. But right. it means it's gonna succeed. Things are going right. okay for you. So now that we're going forward, let's talk about this scene. We know that whatever you did worked and we know that technically tambourines is responsible. So on the comms, as this ice speeder is approaching the ice palaces, think about right now, you're approaching a sheer wall, like a cliff between two mountains. And as you go towards it, you see ornate, um, like crystalline structures. Like everything is hanging stalactites and projecting stalagmites of ice. And as you're approaching, you notice that they're all very finely worked and they're also exactly perfectly smooth. So these aren't just random growths. They are actually intricate and ornate crystal structures that have been preserved forever. And now you're approaching it and you get within a hailing distance and you get the beep, beep, beep of the intercom and they're requesting you to talk to them. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll uh, take the advice that um, uh, my pal Rin gave me. He told me that uh, uh, they usually have um, all of their deliveries come in around this certain time of day. Um, so I'll, I'll just call in like regular. <clears throat> hey, uh, we're a uh, uh, pest control here. Um, I think our appointment is uh, in about 15 minutes, but we're a little early. Is that all right? Pest control, you are early. Unfortunately, we do not have a docking space for you. You're going to have to hover in position for 15 minutes. Hey, that's okay. Uh, just let us know when we're good to proceed, all right? Understood. That gives you time to transmit your clearance codes. Go ahead and do so now. Okay. And, and they go uh, click. And you can hear the, the intercom turn off at that point. So this is a risky situation. You know you can mm -hmm. get in. You know that you got what you need to, but you are going to have to do some finagling to get that extra mile. Hmm. Hmm. Now, at, at any point, um, I've got one of my abilities says that I start with a gambit. Um, nice. Am I able to use that now to uh, swing the odds in my favor? Yeah, absolutely. If you start with a gambit, all the more reason to use it. So how are you going to get these codes? What's your plan for this? This can be all of you together. Um, are there any codes on the ship already? Like, is this... That's a great question. ...already um, been used, the same sort of thing? I think it's either going to be a take stress for having something prepared, or else it's going to be make a roll. So which mm -hmm. of the two approaches do we want to take as a team? I would be willing to take some stress, but it's early in the game. It's all right. Sure. Um... Yeah, I wonder if maybe that's something that uh, Rin could have set us up with. Um, he might, you know, know someone who who has been in and out of this palace before. Okay, I'm on board with that, but then I feel like the stress needs to be directed at Joshua since that's a tambourine that's going to be using his contact. Yeah, sure. Okay, so if you want to take one stress, you just pull up that file that Rin gave you earlier and you've got a good contact uh, code right there, a good authorization code. All right, cool. I will, I will punch that in and transmit it over. Perfect. So this is how we're gonna play Scum and Villainy. We're gonna have a lot of forward moving roles, but we're also gonna have the ability to plan backwards and do flashbacks mm. if we need to. So that's an example of a really simple, low cost flashback to say, Rain already got me the code, here's the code. Perfect. Okay. So the intercom beeps to acknowledge you once again. Hey, uh... You ready yet? Yes, we've we've received your transmission codes. You are cleared for entry. Go ahead. You're going to proceed to docking bay 18. All right. Thank you. All right. Go ahead and take your berth. Good flight. And with that, they just click off again. Phenomenal. Image is like pretty good. <laughs> sort of then heads over to docking bay 18, like turns um, the ship and you know, puts on like the reverse lights, you hear a beep, beep, and she sort of like heads the ship back into the parking lot. So you have arrived, the ship is docked, everything is great. Um, you're in the Ice Palace. Phenomenal. All right, I need a clipboard. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, we'll all put our, our matching jumpsuits on. Uh, I'll carry my, my big canister 
that uh, I've written in like marker, like toxic poison on, on the side of the canister and I'll carry it in um, as we go in. Um, I assume you have like a really nice professional stencil. You guys are prepared criminals after all. Imogen like takes the bag of basically the reward and unscrews a panel in the floor and puts it underneath in case there's any inspections and screws it back in and then tries to make herself look rather authoritative because she's not leading the group but the one who's going to try and talk probably a right. lot to people like she's trying to make herself look more professional probably than she does look like ties her hair up and straightens out um, a jacket over the top of this jumpsuit um, and is like okay ready let's do it okay um we're gonna take she sort of starts like reaching behind like the bar or anything like if there's like not a med bay but like the first aid kit she sort of opens it and stuffs like um plastic gloves in her pocket to set make it look like you know she might be touching hazardous material it could be washing up gloves she's not too sure but she stuffs them in her pockets it's like right. i've got extra gloves in my med kit if you need more Perfect. Perfect. Doctor. We need a doctor on this anyway because mm. uh, research. Um, and starts to um, walk down. The thing. She's like, okay, first of all, I still don't know if I'm going to use my real name yet. All right. I haven't been using my real name for years now. I, I, I kind of like the idea of, you know, I get permission for something I do. So I'm going to, but in this, maybe, you know, death penalty type thing, I'll probably something I don't. <laughs> right, right. What should we call you, boss? I am Ari. Ari Markin is what I'm going to tell them. Ari, Ari well, okay. Right. Onward. And she just sort of almost tries to walk a little higher, puffs out her chest, and walking down this like gangplank. And then we'll lock them as they, before they um, leave. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So, of course, the the signature of Lithios is that everything is freezing, freezing, freezing cold. But something that I feel like Ren might have told you beforehand and that you now have to prepare yourselves for is the ice palaces of Lithios are ancient structures. Um, we don't say the force, we say the way here, for example, for your, your sci-fi um, mystic powers. These mm. ancient ice palaces all have kind of a resonance hmm. and right now as you walk into the ice palaces you need to make a resolve roll if you don't want to heed the echoes urging you to wander into the frozen wastes alone i'm not saying they're haunted but i am saying i picked this planet very purposefully because this is in the book so i'm not saying that, it's haunted <laughs> here's how this works resistance is not great for you uh Imogen tested this out earlier. Actually, Alice tested this out earlier. You make a resist by clicking one of those things up at the top. It costs you six stress minus whatever your best result is. So if your best result was a one, you would have taken five stress. And that kind of sucks because you have 10 stress total. So I guess the question I'm asking is, does anybody want to just walk off into the frozen wastes and, you know, we'll find you in a different scene? I don't think you should. Tempting. I mean, Tempting. I'd rather not. Okay. <laughs> So you need to click on the resolve name and you need to survive and everything should be fine. Um, but All right. Yeah. Um, Do we have any bonus a, dice, did you say, sorry? That's a great question. If anybody would like to push yourself, I really don't see how pushing yourself is a better deal. You can definitely assist to accept a devil's bargain. I do have something prepared for you if you are interested in that. And if you mm -hmm. wanted to spend a gambit, this is something you could spend a gambit on if you were Joshua and you already had one. No, this is tempting. There's a devil's like, <laughs> I'm not gonna have any bonus dice. You don't uh, want to do a devil's bargain, are you sure? Cool. <laughs> As a stitch, my starting ability is I'm not a doctor, but so I can push myself to roll my doctor rating instead of a different action. Can I use that for a resolve roll? Is it has to be an action? I mean, that sounds like what that's for. So yeah, go for it. All right. So yeah, I'm going to be doing doctor instead of resolve. Would this be risky, I guess? Um, yes. Yeah, I don't think the position is going to matter at this point, but yeah, that's fine. Okay. 
and no bonus dice. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, so okay, the reason position delayed. usually matter. Now you're doing Sorry. great. No, it's okay. The reason the position usually matters is if you get a six, you can move up to a better position. Or if you get a one, you're going to get to a worse position. But a resolve roll is just a, a flat roll. It's a stress uh, relieving roll. For example, Alice rolled a six, takes no stress, is doing great. Um, you rolled a five, you're going to take one stress. And then two stress for pushing myself, so three total. Still better than taking five. That's right. Yeah, um, and I think I'll probably go ahead and use my gambit now just to, to give myself that extra die. <clears throat> Sounds good. Oh, lovely. <laughs> wow. Okay, so that's clearly the worst possible outcome. <laughs> so how many, uh, how much is that? <laughs> So you take five stress. So you already had the most stress, but now you have more stress. Um, Phenomenal. It's not great. We'll just, we'll just stick with that. But on the other hand, it's very cinematic. So here is personally what I'm imagining. A low keening wail that is on that psychic frequency. It's not something that you are hearing in your ears. But at this point, you probably have all had the experience of talking to someone who is somewhat telepathic because that is the future and how it works. Mm. So... For you, Imogen, why does this not at all phase you? I think she's oblivious. I don't think it's um, so much of she's like, I got this. I think she's so like, okay, you. Uh, she's trying to get into character and is like, why is everyone weirding out? <laughs> she's like, we've got to get in the castle. We've got to get this. We've got to get this. And then it's only when she notices other people is kind of like, you okay? <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. And how about for Theta? And if we can, let's try to phrase it so it makes sense with the doctor role. God, I was muted. Being a doctor, I'm very familiar with the effects of exposure, so I know to limit my exposed skin, layer up, make sure that everything's tucked in nice, no cold breeze is getting through. So I'm, I'm prepared for this cold. The, the thing I really like is because the role is about psychic stuff and we're talking about the cold, I mean, we all know those two things are connected here on this planet. It's been very clear the way that was described. So there's something about is it really even a, a psychic voice or is it just the ice is messing with your brain because this planet has such a weird chemistry? That's super cool. Mm. I love that. Mm. Um, okay, so tambourines is on the yeah. exact opposite end of the spectrum, is not in any way prepared. Maybe, I don't know, what's tambourines doing? How did this go? <clears throat> I think he started to walk out of the ship and realized that uh, he had left his coat open and his scarf was like hardly even hanging on. And so as he starts to walk down, he gets hit by this wave of cold air and goes, oh, and like starts to mess with it. And that is um, exactly when he like just isn't expecting something and, and it, it gets him. It's fantastic. Okay, I would like to offer you a choice here too, if you prefer, Joshua. Um, for your character, if you would rather, instead of taking all five of that as stress, if you would rather take like a level one harm and take two stress off of there for some sort of like cool frostbite scar on your chest, um, I could see that being a thing. Yeah, you know what? I, I feel like cool st scars are totally, totally in character. So let's do that. <clears throat> so why don't you take two stress off and then give yourself a level one harm that's like a cool frostbite scar and then in the future in some later game you're going to have to imagine that tambourines has like this interesting starburst shape on his mm. chest that's a result of extreme exposure mm, absolutely um <clears throat> and uh, i just want to make sure that i see where the harm is on here so right below stress it's got the levels and it goes from mm -hmm. three down to one you just need to put in <clears throat> pardon me a level one Okay, just one. That's right. All right. Yeah, and that's perfect. It'll just be like a cool frostbite scar. So the way these harm boxes work, they're actually descriptive. So you would put like words there rather than putting like numbers. You don't have to track the number of points you take because when you fill up all those harm boxes, you're dead anyways. So gotcha. don't worry, there's not a lot of boxes there. It's, it's fine. Cool. So... I think that's wonderful. Um, yeah, a tambourine shaped scar would be pretty on point. That would be great. So in this moment, you have all reacted suddenly to the cold and all of its psychic altering effects. Looks like we um, got a Lord There's Lord. also, hey, a raid, a gigantic Hello, raid. Madam Hello, Madam Gandalf. Hello. Um, so yeah, you have all walked into 
the plaza, like the front, what's the term I'm looking for? You've got the TSA line, you've got customs going into the Ice Palace where they're going to check your equipment and check you in and let you go forward into this ancient and unknowable horror. So look forward to that. Excellent. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much the face. And, you know, unless you guys really feel like you need to make another roll, I feel like things are going okay for you right now. You know your clearance checked. Do you guys want to talk to them? Is there anything you want to get from them? Um, I think Imogen would want to talk to them. One, to also let them know of their presence, because if they look like they're sneaking in, it's going to be more suspicious. Um, yeah. I feel like she would have fake IDs because she was kicked out of the academy and has done a lot of smuggling in her time now. So um, um, she might just like flick through some of them and like again with her gloves like clip one on. Um, is there like a desk or something that she'd have to approach, or is it? Yeah, there, there's a desk and there's a computer, which again, everything here looks so super heavy duty because the computer screen is probably like that thick, but then they have so much insulation around this just to make sure they can actually operate a computer that it looks like an old, like, you know, like a serious tube TV. So yeah. and they're, they're punching buttons. So they've got a like 1960s keyboard because they have to punch that button really hard for it not to stick. Oh, so this God, looks like is. a Star Wars setup. <laughs> there's a reason all that stuff looked the way it did. So, okay. Um, I think Imogen tries to stride forward as confidently as possible. Um, sort of pulls, this is on like one of those like ski pass things, the little extendable um, thing. She sort of holds it out. She's like, hello, Ari Markin of Mark and Extermination and Co. And sort of tries to um, put it back very quickly so they don't get a lot of look at it. Um, That's fair. This person's wearing a gray head to toe, like covering like a hazmat suit almost, but with a very fitted hood. And they have gigantic goggles where their eyes would be. And even those are slightly frosted. So they're looking at this computer like this and they turn and look at you with their goggles and they definitely did not catch your badge. Yeah, she's like, um, we're here because there has been a, um, a question of um, pests in the area and you know what they're like when they can chew through some of the materials and the, the you know the cold gets in and then we're all <laughs> in real trouble they're they're nodding at you and their goggles are going up and down and they say basement level room c okay perfect thank you is that where all we'll, um we want to check um a lot of uh, hiding places you know they can sort of stay in containers they can uh, stay in storage rooms and things great okay thank thanks thank you my friend and it's like is this goggle, these goggles not at her it's like Basement, basement what? Basement level, room C. Room C, basement level, room C. Is she sort of like talking to the others? It's like, thank Perfect. you. Um, yes, and she sort of tries to hurry um, past. And if there's like elevators or stairs or something, she'll head straight to those. I am envisioning a very cool circular lift that just goes <laughs> up and down with clear glass walls. So as you descend from this level, which is ground floor down to basement level, um, it's of course, everyone can see you, but you get on this lift, there's already like 13 people on there. A few giant like crates that are on the pallet movers, that sort of thing. I think it's why. Yeah, she sort of like tries to remain as upright and again, as authoritative as possible if people can look at them all in this yeah. um, elevator. I'll shift my canister so that the, the words toxic um, <laughs> are very clearly visible um, <clears throat> as I continue to, uh, you know, uh, finally close up my, my jacket and, and, and try not to get any, any more frostbite. Stuff. Everyone here is wearing so much more clothing than all of you. Um, everyone here approximately looks like they're wearing a Ninja Turtle costume that's covered in gray. Mm -hmm. So they are just like these big, baggy, saggy things, and you couldn't tell any part of body part from anyone here. They've all got the goggles on, and you three are basically wearing for them what would be like summer attire. You're just wearing the heaviest parkas you own and like face uh, scarves and balaclavas and so forth. Sort so. of like looks around thinking, feeling very underdressed all of a sudden. It's like a black tie party for hmm. a very interesting crowd, yes. <laughs> I love it. So you've reached the basement level. The lift has descended all the way down. A couple other people get off. They're moving one of those big pallet movers down the hallway alongside you. It was uh, C, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, basement. 
yeah, I'll, 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 I'll approach one and be like, hey, uh, yeah, basement level, room C, you point me in the right direction. They cool, point thanks. over to your right and just kind of point. Cool. I think it's this way. Start heading that direction, I guess. Okay. Hey, um, head up, keep walking, walk with confidence, no one will question us, and just yep. keeps moving. That's very Perfect. close to what they would be wearing. That's right. <laughs> They they all look like they're dressed like the Michelin Man or like you know a, a, a Ninja yes. Turtle. If they were just like the three D render model of a Ninja Turtle, something like that. So it's super great. Yes. So you've reached basement level, room C. And this is the point at which I feel like you're going to have a lot of fun because there's this big like uh, again it's like a seal door. And it has a, just like a push button off to the side. It looks like it'll be very easy for you to open. But with the big glove, just <laughs> trying to hit the button. <laughs> she still has her massive gloves on. So we push the button. I hastily go over here to check our lines and bail sheet to make sure nothing got added that I'm not thinking of. <laughs> um, are, are there any, any oh dear. animals or are there any animals or insects that I need to be aware of immediately? I'm good. No. Oh, good, 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 good. All right. None of them are children. All right. So maybe we we push the button. The door opens. It goes, and there is again that temperature differential as everything in this room begins to freeze very hard, and there are millions, no less than millions of tiny gray multi-sectioned animals scurrying across every surface inside of this room. Wow, it's really like a things. wave coming towards you at this point. Like coming towards us? Can, can we just yes, shut the door and make a plan? Can I put my hood sure. down? <laughs> like, I don't want these getting in my it. suit. I don't like... All of these things. So Theta <laughs> reaches over, slams the button, the door is <laughs> like zoop closed, and you can hear the animals kind of go exactly. against it. So, so. <laughs> do, we, do we have like any any way uh, using the, the pihon that we were given to like get a, a proximity to um, the, the package that we're trying to obtain. Is that in this room or are we able to, to tell that? So what you have effectively is you have just a burner phone that's going to call their number and nobody else. It's like you've got one of those children's phones where it'll right. only dial your parents' number. Um, so you have that. Mm, okay, okay. Um, did we, in the brief second that the door was open, see a large container that would require a ship of our size in order to... Um, move it that's a really good question because you're in the basement level in room c it's it's going to be a real challenge to see mm. that mm. i think what you saw is you saw an area where an external lift is activated in the very far corner of this room okay so uh, actually imogen sort of like pauses is there like a window to this door like to look back in or is it i i don't think anybody else wants to look inside this room no yeah sorry. um is it Wait, so are we actually exterminated? She's actually having a complex. She's like, so there's actually an infestation here. What the hell it's were those possible. things? Yeah, it's very possible at some point Tamarines will have to have a strong talk with his friend Ren about the job <laughs> that he was supposed to do that he just handed off, like freelance outsourced to you all. But I don't know. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I feel like uh, perhaps we, we um, should try to find the actual room where the package is being stored. Um, so maybe the move is uh, we leave one person here fiddling with our equipment because we you know have some equipment here and I hold up the the container of toxic whatever it is. It's probably just like, I don't know, a bottle of vodka. Um, and and so someone will stay here and they'll be working on the room while, the other two split up and, and you know try to find uh, the package. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, I can stay if that's. Um, if you'd like to, I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying you have to. Well, I'm more. I more feel that I'm technically seen as in charge with the. And she pulls like this thing that literally just says multi-pass. There's nothing else on it. 
Um, <laughs> and so, so she sort of like pulls it back and it's like, if anyone's going to be here, it may be me. And okay. I can blame it on apprentices not knowing what they're doing and wandering off. You know, I think we forgot something back on the ship, right? Yeah. Mm. Where was we'll that elevator right at again? <clears throat> I think it's that way, right? Pretty sure. Must must be. Let's go. I just it, it's fine. the toxic thing. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just sort yeah. Of like, cut half hugs it, just stood by the door. <clears throat> yeah, uh, uh, don't drink too much, just in case. It's frozen. <laughs> You're, it's right. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> Science kids. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> and I, I'll, Tam brings a look at Theta and, and then you, you want to go? Let's lead the way. Cool. Um, and as we, we go, we'll, you know, each door we get, we'll just kind of like accidentally like bump, look in, bump, and walk away. Just like super subtle. Just, just try to see what's inside. <clears throat> okay. That sounds good. Let's uh, let's see what kind of role we can get in here. Sure. Okay, so I feel like at this point, going through all of these other rooms to find anything anything else, I think it's going to end up being more of a fortune roll than anything else. All right. So let's talk about: Is there anything you want to add to this fortune roll? So, for example, do you want to continue phoning a friend and finding out how that goes? Do you want to take a devil's bargain? Do we have any other fun stuff like that? Hmm. I'd be willing to take a devil's bargain to get the right room. Okay, okay. Hmm. So the devil's bargain I'm gonna give you. So the way this is supposed to work for scum and villainy is I have to tell you what it is first so you can say whether or not you wanna take it. Taking the okay. blind bargain is fun for me, but less fun for you guys, so. yeah. Here's the, the deal I'm going to make for you. If you take the Devil's Bargain, you're going to find the right room, but you are going to have to deal with this pest problem. <clears throat> hmm. You can roll for it without it if you don't want to. I mean, <clears throat> I've got an idea for how we can deal with the pest problem, like actually deal with it. Uh, it just happens to include my detonator. Um, I'm okay with this, uh, but we're going to have to move very, very quickly at that time. It's better than the plan I have, which is nothing. So, okay. So, um, yeah, let's, let's, let's do as much as we can before we blow the entire pest room up. <clears throat> and then, and then hopefully we just get out in time. Okay. So what it comes down to is, are you going to make this fortune roll? And if so, are you going to take the devil's bargain? Sounds like, uh, sounds like a yes. I'm willing to do that. All right. So we're making a fortune roll with a bonus die. So let's say Except two dice. Both of us or just one of us? Um, I think Theta said they were gonna, I think that, okay. yeah, Blue Box said they were gonna take it. So it's on them. Great. You said it was uh, roll fortune with two dice? That's right. Did it roll? Nice. There it goes. All right. So here's the bad news. Two oh threes no. are two failures. So oh you no. go to the room, the very first room you open, you push the button. There are three, if you guys know what a Warhammer Space Marine looks like, there are three <laughs> guards that are dressed approximately like that. They're all sitting here, and one of them puts a new clip of ammunition into their gun and goes click click. And then they look up at you and they go, what are you here for? Hey, uh, men's room. I'm sorry, these facilities are restricted. What group are you with? And they stand up and they're all grabbing their rifles yeah, yeah. and walking hey, towards we're, you in the doorway. We're, we're pest control. I just, um, uh, we, we need a The pest a control sink. room is down that way. And they're pointing yeah. you now back towards room C. Yeah, no, we just need a sink to uh, mix up some of our chemicals before we get started. You'll have to use the one on your ship. You're not authorized for these facilities. Okay, sorry for the intrusion. And now, because you rolled the three, they're all going to stand there in the hallway and watch you all enter room C. Cool. All right, that's fine. Um, 
this is great. Everything is fine. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Image is like, how'd it go? <laughs> like, <holding> great. <laughs> and these like stomping stormtroopers are coming along behind them with their rifles on their shoulders. It's great. Yeah. Uh, hey, so great. we're gonna we're gonna just hop in there real quick. Just, just real quick. Okay, and like make sure like the seal is it glows, but it's like you know when you reseal a packet, that's how she's gonna get her, like yeah. it down. She's like, <clears throat> okay, psyching myself up. And she can't help it, but she holds her breath. She's like, oh, right, sort of goes into this door. And she opens it. Okay, yeah, so yeah, the door, we'll in. Iris is open. It's great. And when it, Iris is open, it, it should like bugs start spilling out the edge of it. And she's like, nope. And, <laughs> yep. and these stormtroopers are like gently kicking them back into the room after you as you all climb in the door. That's the fine. The last scene you all get, who wants to look back and see them close the door on you? Sure, I'm, why not? Well, yeah, yeah. Why not? So Tambourines looks back, <laughs> sees them close the door on you, and they're waving like this as the door. Iris is closed. Maybe like one more bug Try gets to thrown through at the end. Yeah. So you are all now hip deep in bugs. Perfect. Like, yeah, she's like, I'm so glad I saw all my suits. <laughs> like, she's looking around. She's like, in a good way, though, if we need to get out of here quickly, we've got a distraction. Open that oh, door. Oh, you have a really good point. <laughs> yeah, we do. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we, we discussed a moment ago as we were uh, unsuccessfully wandering around. Um, what if we just blew the room up? Um, I mean, then later, I obviously, but but like that solves the pest problem. True. It may blow a hole in the side of the thing, and then we're exposed to cold as well, which is the only issue. But that could also get us back to our ship, outside of the watchful eye of security. Also yeah, true. So let me really quickly <laughs> describe room C. So on the far wall, when you enter, there is the track that an external lift goes along. So there is an external lift in this room. It is currently mm -hmm. underneath six to 12 inches of bugs. Gotcha. So gotcha. you can't see it, so you can't tell exactly how big it is, but there is a another iris hatch at the top of this room that will probably dump like seven feet of snow down into the building, but also open up to the outside. So you do have direct outside access, hmm. but hmm. you also have millions upon millions of these bugs. The good news is they're each about the size of your hand, so they are not small enough to fit inside of most of your clothing. They are just going to crawl all over you. Okay. Hmm. It sort of starts make like you know the wading to the elevator like to have a look sort of flicking them off as she goes and she's like well if anything does go wrong i don't think they're gonna survive in these temperatures we just open the hatch that's actually what i was just thinking what if we just open the hatch however i would like to we're not actually exterminators we need to find um, right <clears throat> right but it seems like our only way forward is through at this point maybe i'm wrong so i'm assuming this elevator goes down as well right correct um that's a great question that may not be possible to answer with 12 inches of bugs on the floor okay mm -hmm. do i have a spade <laughs> i'm saying i've got a melee weapon i think i'm just gonna start swinging at, at these bugs just trying to smush them and, and crush them and get rid of as many as possible um so I feel like when we get to the bug situation, this would be going from that risky position to a desperate if you decide to engage in physically, just desperate. because they outnumber you by the million to one ratio where yeah. you just, you can't do anything to them. They are effectively just too many bugs for hand-to-hand -hand combat or like clearing a spot away. If you clear them, the other ones just fall on top. So there's a lot of bugs. Is there a cargo thing in here? Um, like a, are we talking about like, like a big container that would, could have something in it? That's a great question. There is a number of very large things in this room that are obscured by the number of bugs on top of them. Hmm. So there are things that are taller than you that are in this room that could very well be like, like a portable studio or something like that. Like they're that big, but they are covered in bugs. I won't lie, I don't like the guards. I'm tempted to let some out that way. But is that going to lose us time? Uh, I, I feel like they're not happy with us right now. Um, they they did not want to let us use the restroom, and I'm a little offended, to be perfectly went to honest. the restroom? <laughs> like, uh, she looks like... Look, they did not want us to be where we were. We went in the wrong room, and... 
they didn't buy it. I want to see what happens when I open the hatch. She like eyes up like her, her friends and walks. Um, I, she's like, okay, make sure all your layers are on. As she's sort of pushing it shut, wades through. She's going to open the hatch to the top to see what happens to the bugs when it happens. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So you push the button for the iris hatch to open. Uh, big klaxons and sirens start going off, blinking lights. The hatch starts irising open and immediately snow starts falling through. Ah. Just pounds and pounds, <laughs> hundreds of pounds of snow start falling ah. through. I'd like to and as this off. door opens, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. But yeah, it just starts irising back close very slowly and still more snow piles through. Um, there's probably 20 feet of snow up above, but now there's just a healthy mound of snow on top of these bugs. Hmm. And after a little while, they just start scurrying all over it and they seem totally unaffected. Damn. <laughs> like, she looks like she's basically blocked one of their ways <laughs> out as well. Like, okay. Uh, with my history of academy training, do I know anything about these books? Do they look uh, familiar? That's a, that's a great question. Um, let's see. I think that's going to be a study role. So All if right. you want to make a role or if you have something more compelling you want to do. Uh, I can't think of anything compelling off the top of my head, so let's just go with the role. Okay. Yeah, so you've got one die. Unless you want to take a bonus die, you can just deal with that. Um, if you want a devil's bargain, if you want a push yourself, you could do either of those things. I've had a couple bad rolls. It's time for a good roll. I'll just take the one die. Fair, fair. Where? Oh, there it goes. Desperate, right? Um, no, uh, let's see. For this, let's say it's risky because you're just studying bugs. I don't feel like anything's going to happen that's really bad there. In fact, you could even say that's controlled. If you haven't pushed the button uh, yet, you could say that's a controlled situation. Okay. And then effect standard, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. No bonus dice. Let's go. Let's we get. Well, so it went from oh controlled to risky really quickly. And apparently what happened is you're looking at the bugs, you're trying to study them, and I don't know. Why is it so bad when you're looking at all these bugs? Are you getting pushed over? Are the bugs just like way grosser than you're used to? Are they moving too fast? I'm going to say there's just too many of them. I'm trying to study one and three more are climbing over me. I just can't focus. There's a ton of bugs. And so yeah, again, bugs. you can't tell if you're looking at the front or the back because every time you grab one, they start spinning around and moving around and just everywhere. You said that there's some large containers in the room, right? There Would it be and possible? Large containers, these would be like 15, 20 feet tall okay. and probably about as wide again. Would it be possible to like scramble up on top of one to see if maybe there are less bugs up there? Sure. Yeah, that's definitely something you can do. Um, I don't feel like we need a roll unless there's something we're really looking to get out of that. Um, sure, just trying to get some elevation and also maybe get out of the sea of bugs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know what? Let's make a roll just because of the fact that that could potentially have a game benefit to you. Sure. So we're doing a scramble, and you've got a, a die there. So unless you want a bonus die, just go ahead and make it at a normal risky position because you are climbing on an ice-cold metal box. Right, of course. Risky. Uh, standard effect. Mm -hmm. And no bonus dice. Great. So you're up there. Um, you know, maybe a little bit of banged shin, a little bit of bruising as you go up there, but you're up there yeah. and there are still, yes, a lot of bugs. In fact, um, maybe they like being higher better because there is a mm. sizable mound of bugs on top of this box. Um, yeah, but it's about 15 feet. You got up there, no problems. You've got lots of space to look around. You can see the lift very easily, which takes up one corner of this room. And it looks like you have no exterior doors to this room. It is just mm. this floor, the controls, the lift, this box that you're standing on, two other similar boxes. And there's no like clear surface of the box anywhere um, that we could get a peek inside. Um, no, they are all like okay. small rooms more than anything else. Gotcha. <clears throat> and you said that there, it seems like there are more bugs on top of the box than there were on the ground, perhaps, that they, they yeah. might prefer to be at a slightly higher elevation. Let me throw this at you. Since you made a success and everything's going well, it seems like this box is slightly warmer 
you know, like mm. maybe there was actually some sort of temperature control to this smaller area of the facility. And maybe that's why there are so many bugs here. Hmm. <clears throat> I, um, I think the bugs are trying to find warmth. Um, cause this box, it, it this crate, it seems really warm uh, compared to, to the room around it. Um, <clears throat> perhaps there's, there's some way we could, um, lure the bugs away by by offering them a uh, a warmer environment or, or perhaps there's um uh one of these crates that we could open in order to to get all the bugs to go inside and get out of our way i'm not sure and she sort of like pauses like, are you suggesting we light a fire or have we got any actually have i got that's not a bad idea I did. Hey, you guys can always have loadout, or you can always do a flashback and say that you decide you're carrying something in. We can always do that for a stress. Hmm. <laughs> a little portable camping stove, just. <laughs> um... I mean, I'm not going to tell you how you decide to make tea on this ice planet. You can do it however <laughs> you want to. Well, I, uh, you know, I feel like um, uh, if one of us has like repair tools or something as, as part of the uh, the loadout. That would probably have something for welding. Uh, might be able to light a small fire with that. Blue torch. Oh, repair tools. You mean like these things I have packed in my med kit? Yeah. You know, it's uh, it's funny. I've got one of them on my sheet too. Perfect. Do you have a blow torch in your med kit? <laughs> I mean, it's a big box with stuff in it. Where else am I going to put tools? It's <laughs> a good question. So yeah, what do we want to do with all of these blowtorches everyone's carrying? Do you have mm. uh, anything to use to start a fire? Do I have any, like, can I carry any papers or anything? Um, Probably got some on your clipboard, right? Like that, I was going to say, if we've got like a clipboard or something, and just start scrunching. If there's, is there anything around? Like, if there's a desk, I'm going to burn the desk. Like, it's that sort of level. There's so many bugs in here. I do wish I could tell you there was a desk in here, but I don't feel like they would have a nice wood desk on this ice Damn planet it. bug room. Um, so mm. I do think you're probably out of luck there. Maybe the uh, contents of one of these containers is uh, flammable. Sounds good to me. And can we open the doors if there's loads of bugs? Like, are they the sort of thing that's... Yeah, that's a really good question. So each of these containers is a fairly elaborate system, and there is some sort of, um, like, climate control on the side. Like, if you go to a really fancy storage locker, and they do have their own specific doors, uh, all of them have doors that open the full length of the front. So if you open it, it's going to, like, open, like, a storage, um, like a, what do you call them? Like the ship containers. Mm -hmm. So look forward to all of that. But yeah, they have climate control so that if you can figure out, you could totally open. Mm. Um, I think Imogen is sort of, I'm going to open the container, just walks in and just opens the thing despite bugs flooding in or anything. So your, your only downside here is it is going to be an effort to do so. So we could do a controlled hack roll. We could do a phone a friend. We could do something else that requires a point of stress. You guys tell me what you want to do. Hmm. Could that be considered like a like a, a scrap roll, perhaps, or a, a something that requires a little bit of brute force to to open the doors? I, I imagine I could I could try to brute force something. Absolutely. In that case, with it being a brute force roll instead of being controlled, it's going to go to risky, and if you hmm. fail, you're going to break it. Hmm. Mm. Okay, we got what a blow do we think? The, uh, <laughs> the 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 handles look a little bit um, flimsy. Should I try to open it, or should we uh, should we see if there's a way to open it using the the actual like locking mechanism? Um, I tell you what, we could try use the locking mechanism first, and then if that's not, a good brute idea. Force. <laughs> You're right. Okay, what do we need to roll for locking mechanism? I think that's something maybe Imogen would start trying to work so on. So you could you could use the actual panel with the actual access controls. You're going to have to mm -hmm. roll a hack. It's a controlled hack if you want to do that. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, 
controlled. If you want a devil's bargain, we can talk about that. Oh, but I like things like that. Um, yeah, yeah, I want a devil's bargain. Right, so how does that affect okay. my roll? Um, it would give you an extra die. And okay. in this case, the devil's bargain is that if you take the devil's bargain, you are going to get to have another conversation with Zorm. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> um, bonus dice, one more bonus dice. Yes. All right. It's very, very good. So <laughs> a six on already a controlled position, that means you get greater effect. It's the best possible way for this to go. That's the natural 20 for this game. So good show, good show. Okay, so as you hack into this control panel, your uh, your burner p hone starts going off. Wah 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 wah. Oh. Mm. Uh, okay, okay, and sort of opens it and is like, "Hello, Zorm." <laughs> Uh, yeah, this time there's three of them, and they're all staring intently at the screen with their antennas twitching like this. Yes, and they go, sir. yes, hello, it is nice to see you again. Have you located our position? Um, and sort of like looks around in the container. Yes, yes, and the door at this point starts opening because you pushed the correct code in, and it is totally empty. It's much warmer inside, and at this mm. point, all of the bugs begin surging forward to get inside mm -hmm. and they say yes yes those are those are the things we need bring them all to us those are our possession possessions <laughs> okay that's fantastic i just wait a second mute myself like the fire like the fire <laughs> like it's like yelling at one of the others all right all right <laughs> got blood torch over here going like <laughs> All of these bugs are scrambling to jump into this container. They are moving so fast right now that you are all actually about to make a resistance roll because you're gonna get slammed into this thing and pushed <laughs> to the very back as the bugs flood in. There's not nearly enough space for the millions of them, but apparently this is what we're looking for. So my personal thought right now is that we are making a prowess roll to get the heck out of the way before the bugs swarm you. Okay. And I am going to okay. say that a. Um, did we ever get. Did we get tambourines down off the box or is tambourine still up on top? I think he was still on top. <laughs> I, I may have jumped down if it was advantageous. Um... I'm arguing for you getting a bonus die because you're on top of the box. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so if it was not it. advantageous for me, I would not have jumped down. But, but okay. if I felt like I could have helped down there I, I would have but i you you could be helping down there but instead you could be saving yourself from being swarmed by bugs hmm. well once the doors are open i'm happy to get out of the way um okay that that was the plan to begin with okay so we're gonna make our prowess rolls if anybody wants a devil's bargain i'll try to come up with something really terrible for you otherwise you can just roll for it and we are gonna get mobbed by bugs if you don't uh, don't succeed Very nice, very nice. And these aren't so much resist resistance rolls as they are just like the basic stat rolls. So we're not gonna take any stress on this, um, but you guys all did roll really well. So maybe you should just take stress so that just Imogen can have some stress. I don't know, 50-50. Um, <laughs> let's do that. Let's have, let's have everybody take stress so that just Imogen takes two stress because you were the one <laughs> opening it, pointing True. the key hone at all these bugs. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, you just had bugs. to wade through the tide of bugs to get back and away from the doors. Um, this box is full, and you still have approximately oh a third of the bugs outside. Hmm. But you can clearly see the ground now. You can easily see that landing, uh, the the lift, the controls, everything like that. One of these three containers, you can see there is a crack in the corner where it looks like the. Uh, like seal had broken. Mm. <clears throat> Can we clarify uh, with the Zorm real quick? Sure. Are the yeah, bugs what the, we're you're trying on the now with the Zorm? Hey, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, Zorm. Uh, just can you can you confirm really quick? Um, are we trying to get the uh, the the creatures, um, or are we trying to get what's inside the, the package? You, you, you were looking. You could see both of them. <laughs> And I wanted to They're just all looking know at each which other one. doing their yeah. 
yes, those are our offspring. We want those. Those are ours. Oh, oh okay, perfect. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to be sure. I didn't know if there was something else in the box. Thank you. <laughs> it's um, like thinking of the dead they just... <laughs> like how bad that could have gone. <laughs> um, and it's sort of I'm like, oh, fantastic! Then that, 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 that's no problem at all. And she's sort of wait, like trying to wade through them. Yeah. Um, so as soon as they get back, she can close the door on them. Yeah. Let's let's hurt as many as we can in the box, just as many as possible. Yeah, um, and, <laughs> like, and she's then, now then, like scooping yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> okay, so you have a box full of tiny Zorm, and this seems Wonderful. like a great chance to take a second, think about what we want to have be the next part of this, and um, take a break. So okay. All right. I'm going to toss it over to Alice. Awesome. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Everyone get a drink or stretch or whatever it is you need to do, and we'll be back with our thousands upon thousands of wood lice in a moment. Bye. <laughs>
I'll be addressing I am. hey everyone so uh the kickstarter for hero forge is now up to nearly 1.4 million dollars we are only 8k and like 20 bucks away from uh 1.4 million dollars on the kickstarter over there it's been a resounding effort from the community to get the new features including the uh resin colored resin models made as you can see on the overlay at the moment um 1.4 million we're looking at uh scars and wounds being unlocked shortly after that we've got n additional spell effects banner decals 1.5 million we're looking at uh, epic wings 1.6 stubble and beards and at 1.7 uh, it looks a lot like the base that that very model on screen right now is standing on and I put it to you that if we can unlock the base that that, stand, that model is standing on we may also be able to unlock familiars that look like foxes perhaps not yet but I reckon it might be revealed as a later stretch goal um, thank you very much everyone who's backed already and uh, I, hope you, I hope you're all looking forward to it as much as I am I'm hype Do I just go? Should I just say something then? So we're here <laughs> and we're playing the game again and it's not at all awkward or weird. Um, yeah, so great. There's a box full of bugs. Technically, they are probably some form of baby Zorm, but there are millions of them in a box meant to contain just probably thousands of them. There's another box that's broken. There's a third box. You're in a icy basement level storage facility so i don't feel like we need to explore that room too much more let's talk about what is the plan for getting this container back into your pest control ship so does this look like the the roof opens or okay yeah that's how that snow fell in <laughs> question does the ship have a remote control effect you know sort of try and like you want to like, make Alice. the ship pull down here yeah like is there a way i can pilot it from here if it's you know okay i feel this yes. is risky because <laughs> i can't see this is, it this is going to be so much worse than the risky this is definitely desperate because you <laughs> are flying this with like a playstation joystick down into a basement and I cannot wait to see what happens when this okay. goes. So yes, it can totally be done. Does it pop out of the pee hole? 
Um, no, I imagine that this is basically just like playing the mobile phone game. I imagine if you match three of the same, like watermelon or pineapple or something like that, you'll probably manage to la land the ship properly. <laughs> We're gonna die. Okay. Um, I want to use all my piloting skills to get three pineapples, please. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, so we know it's a, a helm roll. So there's that. Um, you could push yourself or you could take a devil's bargain. Um, I don't think anybody can assist you, and I don't think you have a gambit. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a devil's bargain because I just want to see what happens, and I like chaos. So it's roll a helm, correct? Okay. Yeah, so the devil's bargain, I have to tell you what it is before you take it. The devil's oh, okay. bargain is, this is absolutely illegal, and as soon as you do this, you will land the ship, but they are also going to break down that door and start firing laser blasters at you. Oh, I like a challenge. Um, yes. Can we start moving right. the other box in front of the door? <laughs> is there a way to do that, or are they too big? Um, I'm going to say that once you get your roll in, depending on the circumstances that it creates, we can see what happens next. Okay. Oh, I add one die, don't I, to my roll, and it you is do. so you a get to desperate. roll more dice. But yes, yes, yes. <sighs> okay. 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 I'm a good pilot. I play PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, killing it. I believe in you. Six, six. I got a six. All right, we'll take it. <laughs> so you've moved the position from desperate to risky. So what that means is, yes, you guys can tell me about how you managed to find cover as these uh, stormtroopers are about to blast down this door and start firing on you all. So mm -hmm. what did you do while, while we've got Imogen over here swiping pineapples and uh, With my marshmallows? my big gloves, like, come on. <laughs> yeah, what were Theta and Tambourines doing to make this safer? So um, yeah. when the yeah. iris started opening, a bunch of snow was piling into the room, right? Mm -hmm. um, is it possible to get around behind the huge pile of snow for, so they can't see me from the door? Sure, yeah. Hmm. Tambourines, have you got some additional flavor there? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, there are these really large containers, but I imagine there's some smaller containers in the room too. <clears throat> and so tambourines would actually be pushing these containers uh, in front of the uh, internal door that opens into the hallway so that um, no one can get in through that doorway. Okay. Okay. So that sounds really, really good. And you've done that. And let's do a really quick fortune roll just to find out what the contents of those containers is. Oh, sure. So like really good. They're like firefighting foam. Really bad. They're explosive chemicals that are toxic. Right. Probably just one day. Uh, I think that's fair. I think that's really fair. <laughs> unless you have something you want to do. I have no way to identify what's in there without looking and digging around, so probably just the one. It's a three. The contents of these, they are definitely pressurized, but mm. they are probably not toxic. Mm. So if Good. they get shot, yes, they will probably like spin around the room and let off like a big flume of gas, <laughs> but they probably won't explode. Right. But that's probably safe for us once we're on our ship, getting out of the way. That, that you know, is going to distract anyone chasing us more than it's going to distract us. I like the way you're turning that three into a four. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? I'm a scoundrel. It's great. So this rocket lands vertically like that, and its little, like, hatch door falls open so that you can load up cargo. And this is as good as it's going to get. The Irish door, you can hear like some sort of prying tool is being forced into it. And there's that shriek of metal as it's being forced the wrong way. Someone sticks a blaster in just far enough where they can take aim and they go pew, pew, pew. And they start <laughs> shooting and hit nothing, of course. But it is officially on. All right, cool. And now here we're going to attempt a musical experiment to find out what this other track is. So Scrap, <laughs> forgive me if this is a lot tracks. louder than you expected. <laughs> I didn't check any of this beforehand because I don't do that, but well, perfect. here we go. It is now the intense part of the heist. So we have our intense music. Okay, so the ship is here. The crate is movable. It's time for the next part of our action. Yeah, I think Imogen is like trying to get it all going. Like she's like left, she can't take her gloves off to do anything. And now she's like, Okay, is there like arms on this thing that help load it? Because she doesn't know, she knows she can't push it herself and the other two are sort of distracted. Um, 
She's sort of trying to see two motorized treads, and it's very slowly putting itself up onto the ramp. God, there's a faster button there. She's like slapping every single button on this thing. You have to match four pineapples to get to go faster. Yeah, she's, so. and you, you oh, can oh, hear oh. Imogen behind you like, ah, damn it, every time. There's always just one that doesn't, you know, it's doesn't line up. It's definitely a pineapple. And it's, you can hear her right. sort of getting angry at this thing. So let's discuss our approach for leaving this facility now. I feel like the ship is there. The cargo is being loaded. It's not mm-hmm. going to get any faster unless Imogen rolls a six and gets that extra pineapple. And right. while that's going on, is there anything that's going to happen besides these stormtroopers piling in and shooting at you? <clears throat> um, I think I would get to a position um, uh, near the door where, where we would board the ship once our, our cargo is safely um, inside uh, and I would pull out my, my blasters um, that way um, if we need to lay down covering fire we're prepared for that um, okay that's really cool so we could use that as an assist on something somebody else is doing sure if you want to call that an assist or you could use it as a I shot some stormtroopers roll either way sounds really good how about for everyone else oh we're getting really close to that that's hype train by now I think <laughs> it's coming in there but okay we were on track. What's up next? Hype train helps us, guys. Right, yeah. That's right. Um, I think Theta, once that um, Tambourines is up on top, starting to open fire, Theta's going to run and try to help Imogen get the um, crate moving faster, uh, either between helping her with her little pineapple puzzle or just trying to push the thing. Um, Imogen is sort so. of like looking at you, but at the same time, she's like, she's the pilot. She might have to run on board. She's going to have to sprint to get this thing going as soon as it loads. She's, she sort of looks at you and she's like, as soon as that thing is on, you two get on board the door and I'm going. And she sort of sprints inside. Okay, so you've run past this very slow moving box. You're now the first one on the ship. Um, yeah, it's continuing on its ascent up the ramp. What else are we going to have happen? I feel like at this point, I think we need to increase the pressure and get on that ship. So as this container, do you think Theta has anything that Theta can do to make that container travel faster? Um, <laughs> Come on. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the, the, I'm not a doctor, but yeah and use, would scrap help push? Anything like that? That's a good question. Let's, I would say you could do scramble if you want to do something physical. Scrap is fighting people. I think scramble would be like physically pushing it. You could probably make either of those things work at about the same rate. Scramble, I have the same as doctor. I could probably just do that, yeah. Yeah, so scramble is going to be like you physically pushing this container and the only downside is going to be it might be too much for the treads to take. True. So you're in a normal, risky position. Everything's good. Um, are the treads part of the crate itself, or is it separate? Yeah, it's wall one integrated unit. Okay. Uh, then I think I'm going to try this little trick I learned back when I was helping uh, one of the syndicates, and I'm going to try to hack the crate itself, the controls on that, using my doctor ability. Okay. Yeah, because you're you're not a doc- or you can use a doctor in place of anything, right? Yep. Okay, it works. You take it's great. too stress for it. Uh, what would that roll be? Um, so you're making a risky roll, and you're just gonna make a, re- a regular doctor roll, right? Yep. Okay. By the way, it does seem that we are on now a level one hype train. Uh, Alice, can you remind me of what that means? Well, if we um, complete the hype train at just level one, um, everyone gets two advantages. Okay. All right. So I'm going to assume that Scrat is putting those on the overlay, but those are bonus dice for y'all. We'll take them. Yeah. And, (laughs) you know, Blue Box, if you want to roll that again with a risky die right now, that hype train (laughs) came in, I feel like, in support of that roll. I'm touched. Uh, Yeah, I definitely want to do that. It's risky again, yeah? Do that. Yeah, risky again, doctor with a bonus die. Bonus die is going to change everything. Watch this. Mm-hmm. That's how it is. Yes. Very good. Very all right, good. all right. 
So it didn't become less risky, which means you're still getting shot at. Everyone's still getting shot at. The doors are still being pushed iris open. But as all of that's going on, you have managed to push the button that makes it go faster. Um, there's a lot of like life control, life support type systems here. And as you're pushing the button to go faster, like you can see the life support battery is draining a little bit, but you just do your override on that. And it's now going double speed. So it's going up the ramp kind of quickly. Now it's like you're getting on to like a, a amusement park ride. It's going like kunk, 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 up there. <laughs> it's a significant improvement, but the battery is dropping. It went from 90% down to 60%. We just have to get it on, guys. Yeah. Once it's on, we're good. We're clear we can get out. Imogen is just sprinting through the ship, probably all over mm -hmm. the place, but she's sprinting yep. through the ship. So you're at the cockpit. You've got the controls. Everything's good. You don't have to swipe any more fruit. In the back, <laughs> we've got Theta. He's got the box all the way loaded, and we have tambourines over by the door with two blasters drawn. What are we going to do yep. next? If, if the stormtroopers are coming through, I'm going to start blasting. So I would say you have the option here of standing your ground, running for the ship. Either one's going to involve some gunfire. Okay. I'll probably try to like back into the ship as soon as uh, we've, we've cleared kind of the lip of, of the loading door. Okay. So it's up to you. We can call that a scramble if you want to say you're primarily running, or we can call that a scrap if you want to say you're primarily shooting. Mm, I'll probably be be primarily running, but shooting to give a little cover as is possible. Okay, so we're doing a risky scramble. All right. Uh, no bonus dice. <clears throat> So it breaks bad. Things mm. don't go well. You are shooting, but they are also shooting. Yeah. So at this point, you are about to get shot. Your choice here is you get shot or you try to make a resistance roll using prowess. Hmm. And could I add one of my advantages to that prowess roll? You could. However, I am being told that we have not actually reached the hype train oh, yet. So oh, currently oh. I'm a little bit premature with this hype train thing. Okay, okay, We're okay. We're at 40%. So for people who are in the chat, we love you all and thank you very much. And if you want to go towards helping us with the hype train, it would be excellent. All right. So just a standard prowess roll to try to um, stay out of harm's way for now. That's right. So this is a resistance. So it is going to cause you stress if you do the resistance, um, depending sure. on how you roll on that. If you want a bonus die, I can give you a devil's bargain. Sure, why not? Okay, so the Devil's Bargain is, if you survive, the ship's not going to be totally intact. You are going to puncture the hull as you're getting into this uh, firefight. Hmm. Hmm. That doesn't sound like a good idea. Um, <clears throat> it's going to make everything worse for this point forward, but it will save yeah. you for the next few seconds. You know, I feel like I could I could take a point of damage, so uh, we'll, we'll just... We'll just... No devil's bargain, just see what happens. Okay, it's gonna be a level two harm for you. Okay. You don't have any sort of armor, so it is just gonna, oh, actually you do. You do have armor down there. I do have armor, out. yeah. So it is gonna take all your armor. Okay. Okay. All so right. So let's just have you be shot. Basically you get shot. It's as you're climbing up, it gets you like right in the side, but it is one of the areas mm -hmm. where you have the most armor in this armored suit. Okay. So there is a big, like it's not a puncture, but there's a big laser scarring mm. on the front of the armor like this. And right now um, you can tell if you took another shot like that, it would not be good. Yeah. That armor yeah. is gone. Oh, man, just got this. <laughs> so the hatch begins to close at that moment where you hear it go click. What are you going to do, Imogen? She's just gonna like if she's as long as everyone is on board the equivalent of the accelerator she's not asking if seatbelts are on she's she doesn't care everyone is in the ship she is putting her foot down to get out of there we have more raiders got so it it's perfect timing because this ship is taking off <laughs> <laughs> she okay. just slams her foot down and is just like pulling back as fast as she can okay so here's what this helm roll is about taking off, getting out of the immediate area where these troopers are, 
and getting into the upper atmosphere where they stop shooting guns at you. So prepare to be fired on, depending on your helm's roll here. It is going to be risky. Do you want to hear about Devil's Bargains? I do. I really do. You know I do. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so the Devil's Bargain is if you want to take the Devil's Bargain and get the die, they are definitely going to take your ship's ID number, so they're going to know what ship they're looking for. That's fine. It's not my ship. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can sort of... Could I assist with something from my med kit, perhaps something to increase her concentration? Uh, so you're going to give her like a stimulant? Yeah, you can yeah. do that if you Just want to. Just come it costs... up behind me and zap. <laughs> yeah, okay, it costs I'm theta one stress to help. All right. So you've got two bonus dice between that and the Diffle's Bargain here. A caffeine shot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You have two dice. Okay. She, she's like screaming the entire way because it's probably too fast. No! Oh no! No! Oh no! <laughs> so oh. things oh. were great. The the <laughs> caffeine shot like plunges into your neck, and maybe you just like jerk back on the yoke a little too hard, yeah, like, and the ship goes <laughs> and goes nose down into a gigantic snowdrift outside of the ice palace. The engines are still flaring. So you have gone into the powder and are digging a trench through the snow and into the ice as you are all in this. I, I'm, um, I'm going with it. I'm just trying to write it. If I have to go through the ice, I will. The situation is now desperate. So yeah, it has camouflage. gotten worse. As you are <laughs> plowing this trench through and like tearing down like this, um, there's another feature that Lithios is known for, which is underground gas caves. <laughs> The okay. easiest way to find the underground gas caves of Lithios is to plunge your spaceship directly <laughs> nose down into it. And you have done so. And she's like, what the hell did you just hit me with? And she looks back at that. It was like, supposed to be a stimulant. It's Maybe I got the wrong me. one. <laughs> like, and she's like going over with these things, trying to regain control effectively so that she doesn't keep going down, but tries to go up again yeah so the ship is like cantilevering down like this and you stabilize and right yourself there's this very weird effect of all of this gas like settling downwards because it's so cold it's like it's eventually going to become a liquid and it hits the ground and you're just in a big underground cavern and she's sort of like moving through this and she's like right okay so rockets and gas don't mix well so we're either gonna ride this explosion out of here or we're gonna die <laughs> so like good luck everyone all right <laughs> maybe a seat belt is in order and you know strap the um the cargo <laughs> down yeah um could i um at this moment now that we've gotten out of the uh confines of the palace <laughs> Could I call up my uh, old pal Rin and uh, see if he knows any ways through the the, the caves that might um, be uh, navigable by ship? Now, <laughs> I'm having like different opinions of who Ren might be. On the one hand, I can imagine being really, really slimy. On the other yeah. hand, I could see him being very well educated and very like quiet and calm. Which direction do you want to go with this? <clears throat> I I feel like. He, he's probably not the most helpful person in the world, but he's all I've got. Um, so I would say, let's let's go slimy. Let's go slimy. So you're calling Ren. You hear like several seconds of fumbling, a flushing sound, and then the pihon comes up like over his face. He goes, Tamarines, is that you? You look yeah. terrible. <laughs> say the same about yourself. Um, Hey, so we're uh, getting out of that that palace you helped us get into a little bit ago. <clears throat> um, uh, Did you clean up you those know, bugs? Did you get those guys? Yeah, yeah, totally fine. Uh, do you know anything crazy. about the caves underneath um, underneath Lithios by chance? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't go there. That's a terrible idea. Don't go there. There's Let's... giant eels. Uh, you just hear uh. screaming in the background <laughs> from images. You know, like. 170 foot long eels in the <clears throat> gas caves. You don't want that. I hate eels! Like, so this is screaming well, in the front. Let's of say that um, we found ourselves in the, in the caves. What is the best way to get out without dying? 
Oh, um, yeah, yeah, that's a good question. That's a real good question. Um, let's see, how would I get out of the caves? Well, if it was just me and I was on foot, that's really simple because there's a lot of access ways. So mm, you could just, mm. you know, walk up like one of the, the mining staircases. That would be real simple to do. Right, right. And let's say that I was in a ship <clears throat> that is approximately, uh, oh, I don't know, the size of uh, like two school buses. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't worry, because you know what? Those eels, they make huge tunnels all throughout the ice. So I would just fly through an eel tunnel. I mean, it's going to go fine. Cool, cool. Yeah, Do they yeah, surface yeah. eventually? Yeah, a lot of them. Sometimes they just kind of go off cliffs into like a big, you know, like gas lake. It's great. Mm, okay, okay. Cool, thanks. Um, uh, hey, thanks, Ren. Hey, if, we, if you live, don't forget, you owe me for getting you in my pest control job. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally owe you. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. I, don't worry and, about it. And if if you don't live, I can go through your stuff, right? If you want to dig through the caves to find it, you're welcome to. No, I mean like your house. I can go to your house and take your stuff, right? <laughs> I mean, if I was like hypothetically already in your bathroom, it wouldn't be a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. I'm not already. Go for it. All right, all right, cool. Because I really like you've got some great art. I'm gonna just. Yeah, you remember that piece? It was from a couple years back. I think we actually did that job together. <laughs> it's like it's already mine. It's great. Not the time. All right, I'll talk to you later. <clears throat> okay. So there's that. <sighs> okay, so... Yeah, Did he say like eel tunnels? 50-50 <laughs> like, chance an eel tunnel gets us out. 50-50 chance an eel tunnel gets us killed. How do we feel? It's just like, I like those odds. <laughs> accelerator down i want to find never tell me the odds i just want to find the closest eel tunnel and go okay so who <laughs> wants to make the fortune roll to find out which end of the eel tunnel you're going through is it the in outside or the I outside i have a plan for both so i don't mind <laughs> <laughs> if someone else wants to roll fortune for me uh... this sounds medical let's have theta make this roll <laughs> this sounds like it involves a life form <laughs> This involves life form. <laughs> All right, fortune. How many dice? Just one. I'll 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 assist. I'll take the stress to assist. You know what? For this one, <laughs> I, let's go for it. Have a stress. Have fun. All right. Excellent. So is that two dice? Sounds like two dice. Could be worse. So you got a four. Now the real question that I did not ask is, which one is better? Do you want the hole where you're flying towards the eel or the hole where <laughs> there's no eel there? I, Neither is good. <laughs> yeah. I, I would mean, hope the hole where there's no eel. Because I okay, don't so want there's to there's no eel in front of you. That sounds good. Yeah, that's that's what we really want. that gets us really out. <laughs> yes. So you are screaming down this tunnel. There is no sign of an eel whatsoever. And there is a wide opening where you can begin to see what passes for daylight on this world. And just like that gentle fall as gas liquefies and goes down towards the ground. Um, as soon as we hit that gas, I want to put full blast into the rocket so that the fire catches the gas and it just gives us the boost because I've seen Star Wars. Those things come out the ground and try and bite the ship. So I want to literally blast it so if there is anything behind <laughs> us as well. We get that is amazing. Hang on. I want to remind you guys that we did make this situation into a desperate situation from our previous yeah. ice falling landing and so forth. So as you go through the tunnel, hit the the rocket blast to ignite the gas. As all of that goes on, you also see the flashing red lights and hear the klaxons of the three hegemony patrol ships that are now above you in the air. Right. So I'm go through them if I have all, to. <laughs> all this. It's a helm roll again. You've got to have some sort of cool pilot ability for running a blockade. There's got there's, to be a thing, right? There's, hang on, there's... Oh, I can either um, use leaf on the wind, which means I can push myself. You were supposed um, to pick one of those. You're supposed to pick one of those by checking the little triangle. Oh, okay, <laughs> hang on. Oh, <laughs> hang on. Oh, I don't have a gambit. Do yeah. we have we made a desperate roll um, since the start of our, our job? Because if we have, um, my never tell me the odds ability uh, lets me generate gambits on desperate rolls. 
Okay, that's very cool. I'm looking back through it now to see what we've got. There was a desperate roll on the helm mm. when we took off. That was a gambit. That would have been one right there. So we do, in fact, have a gambit to burn. We do have one gambit to burn. I am going to use the um, hedonist thing, which is when you indulge in your vice, you can adjust the dice outcome by either plus two or minus two. And her whole vice is that she likes to drive recklessly. It's what Good. causes is, her uh... loads of problems. <laughs> Good. That is an interesting choice that you have made for yourself for indulging she, your vice. Okay. She's bad at everything. She's good at driving, but it is a, it normally gets her into trouble. So I've selected that, and then do I roll Helm as well? Um, yeah, we have to go through what happens if you indulge your vice. So the downside is this is a downtime action. So I don't think you want to do that right oh, now. Oh, is it not? Okay. Hang on. Yeah, you have to wait for that. You might want to leaf on the wind yourself or do something else instead. I will just um, leaf on. Or you could exceed specs. That also will do something bad to your ship, but give you a die. Yeah, the ship's going to get damaged. Exceed specs. Okay, and you get the choice between bonus die or better effect. And plus one effect is a lot, because that means it goes from standard to greater and so forth. Hmm. So I can either choose a bonus die or a what, sorry? Uh, or you can increase or the effect. Plus. I think I'll increase the effect. And I'm going to use okay. my advantage. I have one advantage, so I roll this twice, I believe. Okay. Okay, and it is desperate situation. Hmm. Okay. And I don't have a bonus dice because I'm taking the effect. Is that correct? But you do have a gambit from me if you want it. Okay, so I'll add a bonus dice for that as well. Yeah. Five, five, five. I'm going to roll it again anyway because just to see how extra I can be. I'll take it. Very similar, very similar. Okay, so it didn't become undesperate but it does have greater effect. So how cool is this going to be? What are you going to do that's going to run this blockade? I have some scenarios in my mind, but I want to hear what you're thinking. Blockade wise, um, I think what she's going to do with the propulsion from these rockets, um, she's going to sort of pull back as fast as she can to sort of, first of all, she's trying to intimidate them to move. She's not moving out of their way. She is going straight towards them and then she's going to um if they don't move she's going to um deploy effectively what are like um you know the parachutes when things um go wrong and um the ship did it and she does it straight at the um windscreens and pulls up at the last second to avoid them but completely cover so it's almost like a really bad cloaking device because they can't see them <laughs> It's Excellent. so good because that explains how your ship got damaged. You just lost your emergency landing equipment. I, just I love lost that. It's so great. So here's additional good news. At first you thought that was just super intimidating to them and they were not enjoying that situation. But to to pile on and give that greater effect, the thing that you were not expecting was igniting the gas is something the eels really like. And right there, when you do all that, you see this gigantic, like there's 12 eyes on each side of its head, gigantic razor teeth, eel head kind of shoot out of the tunnel and go, Wah. and it grabs oh. one of the patrol ships by the wing and starts dragging it down. And you hear this like, boom, 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 with all these controlled explosions as the ship begins to crash. I'm really glad that wasn't us awesome. and it keeps going. But there's still two patrol ships. Your situation did not become undesperate. <laughs> <laughs> you were just really good at getting out of it. So with that, you continue to fly across the surface of Lithios. We're going to downgrade our music from intense to just normal. Just normal Moderate. heisting now. Moderate intense. I should have okay. warned Scrat. I didn't warn him that then. Um, so <laughs> with that, you're flying. There's patrol ships somewhere out there. They definitely know what ship you arrived in, but you have your cargo. And somewhere out there, there are some Zorm who are eager to embrace the cargo. What are you going to do? Do we have like a drop-off point? Were we given a drop-off point? Because otherwise I'm going back to the cantina. <laughs> so... um, well, you do have your secure line Pihone, but I don't think that you have a designated drop-off site. Yeah, she's sort of like scrabbling through, not wanting to take a ship, trying to hand the Pihone back to one of the others. She's trying to keep this under control. Give him okay, a clue, I need to know where the drop-off point is. 
So Theta's got the Pihon. Yep. And you dial it up. And this time there are four Zorn on the screen. And they're doing kind of <laughs> like a stacked tableau. Like there's two standing up and two kneeling down. And they're all twitching antennas. <laughs> yes. Have you secured our possessions? We have the possession, but we don't know where we're going and we're being followed. Excellent. Excellent. Can you can you show us the container for them with the, the life support screen? Uh, I would do that, yeah. Go so to it. And... You, yeah, you go and like point the camera from the Pihone at it, and you see now the battery is at 30%, and it's it's like there is like an exceeds limit uh, warning going off right now. There mm. are way too many critters in this box, and like the life, the life support is plummeting as they are going along in this, and now all of a sudden there is a lot of antenna twitching on the other side. Now, all but... four of these Zorm are are going fast. <clears throat> There's there is that uh, power strip with like twelve heaters plugged into it. <clears throat> is there some way that we could uh, plug this container into the power strip in order to uh, you know make sure that we're not draining the battery too quickly? The fact that you heard there were twelve space heaters plugged into a power strip, and you asked if you could add one more thing. I, I do love that. <laughs> oh, I I'll unplug the space heaters. <laughs> I like the idea of adding one more thing better personally, possibly in some sort of like daisy chain fashion, but it's so good. Yeah, um, we'll do it. I we'll do it. mention that detail for fun. So it's great. You guys could probably come up with something that's going to be, again, some sort of role you all have to make. But sure. yeah, they all seem suddenly very concerned and they say, we will transmit coordinates to you. Hopefully you can arrive soon, but also undetected because this carries, again, the highest level of death penalties. Oh yeah, we're, we're going to be fine. Data, tell them we're going to be fine. It, it'll be fine. Oh, yeah. We're, I'm a doctor. We got this. Mm. Excellent. Excellent. And they're, they're just twitching, twitching, twitching. I put a baby on board side, like in the front. It's like around, like everything's fine. <laughs> Ominous foreshadowing that you already have that. So <laughs> that's great. Okay. What are we going to do with this gigantic box of babies? Hmm. Uh, I would like to use my doctor skill to somehow balance out the life control and make it last as long as possible. This is super relevant to actually use doctor for this. Um, situation's risky, normal effect. Bonus dice. Um, do you want a devil's bargain? The devil's bargain would be in this case when you do, yes, you can plug this into the power strip where all of those space heaters are, but you do need all 12 space heaters to survive in this ship. Hmm. I think I'm going to pass on that. I'm going to take my luck with the dice I have. Okay, sounds good. I don't want to die. Was <laughs> I? No, I mean, in space with all of these wood like children. <laughs> that's why it's a one shot, right? Because somebody. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need to survive this. You know Ooh. what? There are lots of clones out there in sci-fi. Like totally twins. Thing. Like... Oh. Lots of stuff like that. So here's the downside. Our effect is going to go down. This is now a desperate position. Um, everything seemed to be going fine when you tried to like figure it out. You didn't patch it into the, the power strip because that seemed like it was too big of a risk. But the battery in this thing, you're looking over at where like the edge of the container is. It did take a blaster shot. Um, there is a battery leak that is going on right now, just tinkering with it right there. You just dropped it down to 15%. We gotta get there quick. You got the coordinates, let's go. Yeah. Um, would it be possible for uh, tambourines to make a, uh, a rig check in order to try to um, jerry-rig something together in order to uh, help the mechanical part of this um, last a little bit longer? Yeah, that's like literally what that's for, right? So we know yeah. the situation is desperate. So we need to move this from desperate to like risky for it to be a better thing. So you do have to succeed and get like a six if you can. Otherwise, you're just holding things off. Okay. I can make you the same exact devil's bargain that I made for Theta, which is if Tambourines wants to plug this into the, the power strip, you can totally do that, but you will all begin freezing to death. Hmm. Do we so have like, right? <laughs> any idea how long we could last without the heaters on before it, it was fatal? We are going to be, this being a desperate position, you have like 30 seconds less than you need. Okay, okay. Um, 
Hmm. I suppose we could always just like plug them back in later, right? Yeah, that's Depending totally how it works, I'm roll, sure. Yeah, just roll a six and you could totally do that. Okay, well, uh, um, I am not going to take the uh, Devil's Bargain. That's we'll fair. just, we'll just that's do, do, do the one roll. Ooh, okay. The battery seems to be holding. You will have approximately like five minutes to land, get this container off of your ship and get it plugged into a wall socket. And then everything should be great. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> well, um, we got a couple of minutes. I can buy us five minutes, but uh, we, we got to go. We got to go now. Um, do we have options, plans, possibilities? How, how far are we to the actual drop off point? Like, if I drive, like, if I pilot as fast as I can. Is um, it so if you if minutes? you're going Imogen speed like you have already described yourself as going, mm -hmm. you have like four minutes and thirty seconds till you get there. It's going to okay. be like Perfect. so tight. Okay. Yeah. 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 She's just putting her foot down, and it's sort of like be ready by the door to get straight to a plug socket. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's just gun it. Let's see what we can do. Um. You and if fly. possible. I'll just keep an eye out for the other ships. Try to see where they are. Yeah. So you fly and you are all the way outside of the like normal landing areas on Lithios. You're basically in the middle of nowhere in this flat, icy plateau. There is like a small igloo shaped building, just a small dome. Hmm. And right there, there's not even like a landing strip. You're going to be parking on the ice in the snowpack in, in this ice speeder and then just dropping your door and shooting this container down it. So you do that and the container is rolling down. It's still rigged to go really fast. So that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, not good for the battery, but good for the container. But you're getting it all the way down the ramp and there are four of these Zorm standing outside. They don't look very cold. They're not wearing any clothing. They're still just four mm. carapist individuals standing there, twitching their antennas very quickly. And they're dragging a big power cord out towards you <laughs> between all four of them. Okay. And as okay. soon as you get there, they're they're like plugging it in, plugging it in, plugging it in. And you see the life support bar. It's like, it's still down to nothing, but then it starts doing the little charging lightning bolt. Mm. And so there's that. And now that the cord is in, one of them turns and grabs tambourines by both hands and shakes both of his hands <laughs> and says, thank you, thank you. We appreciate you bringing us our precious possessions. And Imogen yeah. is there unscrewing the um, the panel in the floor to get the, 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 um, the goods out, basically. Good call. Good call. <laughs> like, yes, and of course, yeah. there's got to be another four Zorn in order to like haul the other bag of loot towards you all. Great. Um, <clears throat> so, hey, uh, yeah. Do you want the ship back? You're welcome to it. We, we have no need yes. for a ship. Yeah, yes, yeah it's all yours. The ship. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. That's, that's excellent. Um, just go grab something off that tiki bar real quick. You mm. might want to change the number plate. Um, nothing a Sharpie can't solve, um, but I suggest for, you know. We will like, activate the ship's auto-destruct as soon as we finish this transaction. Oh, even better. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, there you go. Actually, you can immediately start. Is it, are you just destroying everything on board? Like, everything? Was there anything that you wanted to take off of the ship? Yeah, and she takes the little, like, um, you know, those gold um, pineapple drinks mixes. She's like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> so yeah. 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 How about an ice bucket? Maybe it's an ice bucket. Yeah, it's one of the, the ones. Yeah, the yeah, it's got the ice in it. Yeah, that's, she wants Perfect. it for an ice bucket. She doesn't want it because it's gold. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. that, it's that fake gold. It's not proper gold. It's definitely fake. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll absolutely raid the tiki bar for as much that's salvageable and, you know, worth consuming. Yeah, if there's a blow up palm tree, I'll take that as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The downside is Theta said he was going to raid the Tiki Bar first, so I got to tell you guys, I don't think there's a lot left at this point. I think you've got some stir sticks and a couple cherries, and then like this ice bucket. Hey, there, whatever's you know, there. 
So that's now off of the ship. Um, <laughs> they seem totally fine. You're in this igloo dome that's just in the middle of absolutely nowhere. And <laughs> the Zorm are now like guiding the, the big tank treaded container over to a different ship. Okay. Are we anywhere <sighs> near where we can get to another ship, like away from like the wasteland? What an excellent question. No. There is, a base igloo. <laughs> there is an ice Perfect. igloo. There is this ship that they are currently moving their container onto, and the ship that they have told you they are going to activate the self destruct on. Hmm. Hmm. You have two gigantic bags of bunny that are each probably 150 pounds. Yeah, this sort of runs over to um, the Zorm. It's like, hi, could you drop us off um, at like the port? Is that, is that a possibility? So all of the Zorm have had fairly normal looks. This one has one antenna instead of two. It turns to look at you, and in a position much like I am doing right now, it steeples its fingers together and says, you wish to discuss a separate business transaction. I mean, I got a gold pineapple in exchange for it. What sort of value would transport off of this ice planet have for you? Um, not off the planet, like I can just go get a ship from, you know, another port. You wish to be dropped at a nearby spaceport. Could you just drop us at the uh, bar we were at earlier today? Yes, we could discuss the fee for doing that. What is the fee? He looks down at the bag of money that you're holding <laughs> in one hand suggestively. Yeah, you can have one of those. One bag of money. Yes. One boy <laughs> in there. And <laughs> she picks one piece out. He says, unfortunately, the three of you are all criminals guilty of the highest level of death penalty transaction. Okay. Other thing then. Can you not self destroy the ship? Can I do that when I get us back? Yes. That would be acceptable as well for. And he looks down at the bag again. <laughs> One bag <laughs> of currency. And sort of look, she's looking back at the others and is like. If we die any... on icy hell, we can't spend it. Yeah. Are there any buildings on the horizon, like something within walking distance away? As previously described, this is just a total icy okay. plane with nothing okay. on it except for this dome. Absolutely nothing. Cool. Yes. Cool. I feel this is like a backstory development as to why Imogen hates Zorm. <laughs> that, that, that's so fair right now. That is so fair. And she looks and she's like, fine, puts the bag down, but I'm keeping the pineapple and walks back towards the ship. So you took the, you don't want the lift. You want to take the other ship. That's what you decided on in the end. I would like to change the number plate before I do. Okay, sure, sure. That's something you guys can work on. So uh, we still right have now, the stencil. Yeah, and you guys have one of two bags of money. You have the same amount of money you yeah. started the game with. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. now and now some glass of cherries. <laughs> well, I mean, you guys got some some good stuff. Let's face it. And mm -hmm. the ship will not be destroyed, as far as you know. And now you are at the point where you're going to change the number plate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she sort of starts to change the number plate like she's scratching it and adding some bits on and she looks to uh, the other two is like, maybe go uh, disable the self-destruct before we... You know, oh, yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> Here's sure. the good news. All of this is going to be a new engagement role because you have a different situation you're now dealing with, which is the escape from Lithios. And okay. so let's discuss what your plan is for how you're going to get out of this situation of being highly wanted criminals in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. There's going to be stuff going down in about one second. So are you going to be approaching this through assault, deception, infiltration, mystic, social, or transport? Here's an idea. What if we hid inside the dome, rig the ship up to blow, and when the uh, space cops come to get us, we blow up that ship with them inside it, and then we go take their ship. And Imogen is just sort of, she's, bear in mind, she's down there scratching the, like the license plate. It's like, wait, so are we keeping this ship or not? Because if not, I'm not going to finish this. 
<clears throat> my idea is that we don't keep this one. We keep another one this that is, is going to be parked when they come to get us on that ship. But we're not on that ship, and we blow it up and kill people. This this, this is a tiki ball. Maybe As a doctor. I'd like things that don't kill people. How about we save that as plan B? Okay, deal, deal. And I like put my detonator back in my bag. <laughs> I'm thinking detonator. maybe make a deception. Like uh, we get on a radio and we tell them that we have a contagious patient on board and we need to get out of system to a, a more advanced medical supply. Or we were attacked by the people on the ship. Or we were mm. attacked. Okay, she sort of looks, she's like, she walks up, and she sort of like, pull, not pulls her head out, she's like, okay, punch me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, as hard as you got, punch me. No. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> she probably just goes straight down. She's so big. So at this point, here's our like overhead shot, like the shot that's coming through on the flyby cam. Um, there are three of these pursuit ships that are closing in on your location. Two of them are probably the ones that didn't get eaten by eels. And there's just a third one that they picked up along the way. Um, in the distance, you see the Zorn ship is like puttering. It's like golf cart compared to like a normal car, it's just like going zip, 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 zip out into the distance. and. Imogen is laid out in the snow out in front of this dome while the two of you are looking at her, your ship just being parked vertically next to it. This is too regular a thing for Imogen. <laughs> this is not All the three of these ships start flying up. The like uh, the spotlights come down on you and they're like searching around and moving around on your bodies. And you hear over the the overhead, like uh, what's the term I'm looking for? The address system. They something like exactly what is happening here. This is a ship that is involved in some sort of illegal activity. State your business. Who are you? They took our ship. They took our ship. <laughs> Could I uh, make a sway check uh, yes, this... to say, um, uh, hey, well, um, uh, this was our ship and then um, some, some hooligans stole it. And uh, we've only just gotten back towards them. Uh, we, we finally just recovered the ship, but they've taken all of our goods. Um, and and they went that way, and I'll point a random direction, not exactly in the same direction as the Zorm, but could be in the same direction as the Zorm. And Imogen is still like laying down, puts a hand up, he's like, and attacked us. <laughs> and, then, like, puts the and they punched my friend. <laughs> Do not let me waste this punch to the face. Doctor, will I live? And she's like dragging. It's, it's touch down. and go. We got to get you to a facility. Like, she's like, oh, oh. Okay, like, so it's, it's going to be a straight up sway roll. Um, I'm, I'm really feeling like the position is desperate. Do you all feel like this is more risky than desperate? Honest question. Um, I think desperate's the way to go. I think it's desperate because if okay. they don't help us, we're dead. <laughs> Just, I'm okay. So with just that. so we're clear, desperate is worse, but I feel like we are at the desperate point in yeah. this where we're we're saying this. Okay, we're good. Yeah. Now uh, I did, I believe, um, not too long ago, make that uh, desperate rig check that did not succeed, but I think that's still enough <clears throat> to get me another gambit. Am I correct about that, or am I misunderstanding? I think you have to roll a six to get a gambit. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So we can talk bonus dice. Um, you have somebody who is assisting you. If Imogen wants to take one stress for being punched in the face, I, I mean. would say that's her assist right there. Um, sure. So you've got a bonus die. And then if you would like a devil's bargain, I could handily give you a devil's bargain, um, mm, sure. which is the fact that if this goes well, they're going to escort you off of this area. If this goes poorly, they are going to seize your ship and you. So the question is, do you go to jail or do you get taken back to the spaceport? <clears throat> Again, I've been. If you don't want the devil's bargain, then we don't have to worry about that. I'm okay with that. How do we feel about that? Like, I've been in worse places. In future, I will break out of another one. So. <laughs> Same right. way, lay, actually. By laying down, it's great. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so yeah, we'll, we'll we'll go ahead and take that devil's bargain. Um, in addition to okay. the uh, bonus die. Okay, so we're desperate. Standard effect. You've got two bonus dice. It's going to go great. Two bonus dice. Okay. Um, let's do it. 
Ooh, look at that. That is hey. how we take a desperate position and we give it a good effect. All right. So we're we're mitigating this. It's better. The situation is such they think that you must be telling the truth. And so rather than just grabbing you and sticking you all in jail, they actually, one of the three ships lands and their medical team, which is like guy number two, gets out and walks over to you all with a bag and is comparing symptoms with Theta. Hmm. Looks like she got punched. I, by Azorn, I've never seen him punched before. And so with that, in that couple of seconds that you've got there, everything seems to have diffused and the other two patrol ships start going after the Zorn. So now that Imogen has like a cloth over her nose, like she's got like a, a gauze and they've got everybody picked up. You go, okay, well, <laughs> hope you have better luck next time. Do the Zorn have any poisons or toxins I need to be worried about? Uh, for punching you? Um, I mean, your face didn't swell up, so they probably didn't puncture you with a stinger, so you're probably fine. Imogen is just like, I'm like, great, thank you. Um, we salvaged everything we could off of our ship, but it's, um, uh, you know, it's kind of in, in rough condition. Um, do we want to keep the ship or do we want to try to um, hitch a ride back to the nearest port? What do we think? They can have the ship for all I care. I just want off this ice hole. I, I, I've got... I've, I've got the pineapple I want, so you know I, I, I'm yeah. done. I got the cherries and the pineapple. I'm done. <laughs> In exchange for the ship, can you give us a ride to the nearest uh, spaceport? Oh, we're just going to impound the ship, but we can definitely give you a ride to the next spaceport. Hey, that'd be great. Thank you. Hey, don't forget your bag. He says, pointing down to the gigantic <laughs> bag of money by your foot. Yeah, oh yes, all of our mechanical parts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is this is great. Thank you. <laughs> and like. She'll over exaggerate like the, the clinging, even though it does really hurt. Um, she's just gonna over exaggerate, kind of lean on the doctor, like just just pack some snow on it, keep it cold. Yep, yep, yep. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> the good news is, you now know what the inside of these drop ships look like. There's just like two hard benches going back, and then one pilot, so mm -hmm. it's it's super great. It gives you lots of time to sit there next to all of these heavily outfitted soldiers. <laughs> and that's probably a lot of fun. So yeah. you get back to the spaceport, which is where the cantina was. It's the attached cantina of the spaceport. And they let you out. Um, Perfect. Th thank you, sirs, ma'ams. Sort of, like, sort of shuffles out of the ship. She's sort of not just hiding her face because of the, the punch, but also it'd be handy for people not to see her face. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> I feel like we uh, get out and go to a separate, you know, safe location and, and good beer. deal with that. Yeah. <clears throat> but maybe not this cantina, but like the next one over. Yep. Yep. And she starts to walk through this, whether it's like a city or port or just yeah, try and yeah. find the next one. Well, it's not an airport. It is like, you know, a Star Wars type civilization. So you do have just one cantina because of course that's mm. how these things work. Mm. At least um, the band is good. Yeah. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So they, there is the one cantina. You are here during happy hour. This is when the band would be good. This is when you would have half price potato skins. But oh, if perfect. you want to try to find something else to do, you could do that instead. I think Imogen would still go back to the bar. She genuinely wants to drink after that. I mean, we don't need to go to the bar to drink. I have a whole backpack full. It's cold outside. <laughs> it is really cold outside in this hallway. Maybe we go hunker down somewhere warm, lay low for a day or so, and uh, sounds like we've got liquid meals over here, so we're fine. Imogen's just like, if there's anywhere I can stay, I'll go sit in the lobby <laughs> and starts to walk towards the equivalent of a hotel. That works. Okay, so you guys are going to go find the space hotel and just like take a berth, hang out, take it easy. Great. Yes. You go into the space hotel. You go up to the counter. There is a person there ready to check you in. As you make your room arrangements, they say, okay, and how would you like to pay for your stay? 
<clears throat> so uh, I've only um, brought uh, large bills. Are you able to um, uh, break this by chance? Um, Oh, oh, sir, we are the finest space motel establishment on this entire space station. We can handle denominations of almost any size. Great, thanks. Junk. <laughs> also, can we order, like, some clothes up to the... Um, she wants very different clothes, but also I think she's probably... I'm sure we can have our personal services help you with anything you might need. That's great. Um, so they take one of the bullion bars out because one would probably pay for the hotel stay for the next week. <laughs> they put it in their little scanner and it goes wah wah. And they look up at you and they go, I'm sorry, sir. I believe your currency has been declined. Hmm. What, why would a currency be declined? <laughs> um, our metallurgical scanner is saying that this is counterfeit. Do it. <laughs> Check another one. Yes, of course, of course. It has to be a mistake with the scanner. They take another one, they bring it down, it goes, eh. they look at you, they go, I could check a third one if you really want me to. <laughs> Again, hand over eye, Imogen looks to the others. You got any spare change? <laughs> How much is it for for a, a room for the night? And I'll also, like start rummaging through pockets. Like maybe I've got some some small denominations. How much is this pineapple worth to you? They're like they're like clicking through their reserve their reservation system. They say, okay, so if we move you out of the suite and into a plain two berth room, it will come out to only thirty credits. Do I have thirty credits to my name? You've got, you've got like twenty nine credits and a chewing like a stick of chewing gum in your hands right now. <laughs> so every round, there you go. I can do the one. <laughs> All right. And we'll we'll take the, uh, the the big stuff back. <clears throat> of course, of course, it's probably just a mistake. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad we sent the police off to their ship. <laughs> yeah. So you uh, have your scum. double birth room for everyone to enjoy. Hey, we've we've got we've got alcohol from the tiki bar and cherries. We're all set. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're fine. Um, and uh, you know, maybe in the morning we uh, head over to the space police station, see if our tip gives us a reward for you know um, getting a hold of some wanted criminals who stole something from the nearby ice palace, and I've been giving out counterfeit money that, that, you know, maybe, maybe we can benefit off of this. <laughs> Imogen's like tucking into like the cherries, the glossy cherries. So do we have any night scenes before we go to the next day? Pass it um, straight out. <laughs> like cocoons herself if there's a blanket, but otherwise just passes straight out. I think Theta would probably drink at least one, if not multiple, of those bottles. Sleep hard yep. on the floor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Probably have a little bit to drink, but then try to just get to bed and, and rest and heal up. It, it was a it was a rough day. So in the morning, once you're all awake and everything is kind of like gotten cleaned up and you're ready to get kicked out of your room because you're about to hit checkout time. Um, there's no food establishment here in this hotel or anything like that. So what all will you do for sustenance? Hmm. Is there a really dodgy, <laughs> would accept counterfeit money kind of cafe? Um, the cafe is the Space Cantina. It yeah. is the same establishment. I'm going back there. <laughs> I have some small candies and treats inside my med kit. I usually give them to uh, younger patients, mm. but it's it's sustenance. I've kept a jar of cherries in my pocket. <laughs> so, other and than if the there's candy, nuts there's in the box. hotel room or like on the, um, you know, like on the welcome thing, if there's mints, I'm just taking nope. them. You guys like, did no. not get the mini bar privileges because you were in the lowest classroom. <laughs> no, I mean at the reception desk. You know, when they have the welcome <laughs> things, I'm taking that. <laughs> I honestly feel like after your bag of counterfeit money, when you came back to get a mint, they moved the bowl. <laughs> they moved the bowl. I mean, I'm just glad. Fair, fair. Mm. So Imogen has gone back to the space cantina. And amidst all of the morning bustle, there is a table in the middle, in the back. It is a round table with three fairly tough, burly looking humans 
sitting opposite two four foot tall antennae Zorm. And you see one of them reach down and put a bag of money on the table. The Zorns put the bag on the table or the burly humans? Yep, yep. This is the exact setup that you saw yesterday that happened with all of you. And they are doing it right now. Are there any space police in the area? <laughs> sure. It's a space port. There's got to be space police. Could I sidle over to the nearest one and be like, hey, I... Um... Pretty sure those Zorm over there are uh, handing off counterfeit money. You might want to check that out. They say to you, really? What gives you that impression? Oh, well, I've been watching them do this same racket a couple days in a row here. And uh, the guys that they um, uh, got a couple days ago came back, said it was all uh, counterfeit money, but couldn't get a hold of them. Hmm. Do you want to make a sway roll on that? I absolutely do. I feel like the only thing that could happen for a Devil's Bargain would be, this is one of the guys who was on the ship yesterday that picked you up. <laughs> but you can't tell with these masks, right? It's really hard to tell. Sure. And what would we call this? Risky? Controlled? Desperate? I feel like this is just risky. Okay. It's not that bad. You're at a sure. space cantina. There's like a brunch going on. Sure. Standard effect. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Now, is this last one, is this, uh, there we go. You know what I saw here, too, is you had this desperate role that you did earlier. Didn't you say you get gambits on desperate, on desperate roles? Yeah, I do. Um, so the previous role, it looks like you had a six on it. So you've got a gambit for future. Okay. I probably don't want to spend it now. Um, no, no. And since this I've is, already rolled, everything's going. you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so they go, oh, really? And they get on their radio, and then you see two space police walking over to the Zorm. And the Zorm's antenna stick straight up. I turned my back to them. I sort of turned my back at the bar. <laughs> and you see the Zorm being physically picked up and walked off. And then <laughs> one of the space police has this giant bag of money as they walk off in the distance. <clears throat> and maybe I'll uh, reconnect with that officer in a moment. Say, so uh, do you guys have any rewards for citizens who you know help you catch hardened criminals or anything well there's not like a standard reward policy but um he slips you a breakfast brunch coupon for the cantina exactly what i wanted <laughs> thanks you're you're doing good work out there thank you for your service and i pocket that yep yep so that's about where we're at so in this Imogen prequel scene, we're going to go out on like this closing shot. It was a spectacular job. You all did what you were supposed to. You just got swindled by space uh, wood lice. Let's talk about where Theta is going to go from here. What's the next step for him? What's his plan? Uh, I think Theta is probably going to try to uh, talk to those burly humans the Zorn were about to swindle. See if uh -huh. they have need of a medic, if they have jobs lined up or way off planet at least. So it went really well after the third time you explained to them that the Zorn job was a scam and that there is nothing they are going to get out of it. But they are very thick headed and you over and over again had to explain that you had just done this job and you got paid nothing for it. And they eventually got that. But um, yeah, you're definitely the smart one in the crew now. Finally. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's good or bad. Though. That's that's complimentary to you all, I think. That's good. <laughs> okay, so we see Theta departing on a space cruiser for some far-off world where his medical expertise will be better appreciated because he's going to have to patch these guys up a lot. They are thick. So from now on, when they pick the engagement roles, it's always going to be assault, I think, and they're just going to come back shot up all over. Good times. <laughs> um, let's talk about tambourines. What's tambourines next play? Yeah, you know, um, he's probably going to look for a way to uh, get back to his place and uh, square up with Rin, maybe kick him out of his house, um, and uh, kind of reassess from there if maybe he wants to go back to being retired, because this was not a good job. Yeah, so everything goes pretty well with that. The interesting thing is that Ren managed to get your bed out of your house and sell that. Out of all the things he could have taken, he sold your bed. Um, but, you know, I mean, you have a couch, so there's that. The couch is comfortable. I've slept there many a night. 
So there you go. Maybe it was time for a new bed in the first place. You know, something yeah. that better supported your posture or something like that. Hmm. But yeah, things are good. And again, in the, the pairing of you and Ren, you're still the smart one there. So everyone is just, you know, they're getting an upgrade really at hmm. this point. You know, their new teams are working out better for them. Um, maybe you could go into pest control for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was clearly very good at it. You have job experience now, so there's that. <laughs> You're right. Okay, now let's talk about Imogen's next step. An interesting thing to think about for Imogen is Imogen learned what it's like to have psychic contact with things, and that if she just thinks about something else, it doesn't really affect her very much. How do you feel like that carries forward for Imogen? Imogen is now very aware that she's not affected by a lot of stuff like that. Um, she's never really thought about it before until she approached this place and is now kind of like, huh, that'd actually be kind of handy to figure out what the hell was going on. And she sort of sat at the, I'm assuming she's still at the canteen. She's sort of sat there, kind of trying to figure out what her next move is, but that's the process going through her head. She's almost not making notes, but she's sort of writing things down onto a napkin, more sort of drawing what she saw than anything else. Uh -huh. Uh huh. And in future endeavors, maybe should she come across some psychic people or people that communicate using the way? Um, we're just going to notice that Imogen really is not very good at that. Like she's incredibly resistant to the idea of communicating psychically. Oh, she's awful. Like there's probably sure. someone at the bar doing something there, and she's just. I mean, I don't know where I can find someone like that. <laughs> she's like. There's a Zorn like sitting this. across there trying to think at you really hard right now. Yeah, and <laughs> she's just like. Uh, like just doodling and drawing you can see a lot of like doodles of zorn like either being thrown out of a ship or being eaten by a space eel or there's like all of these doodles on the napkin but she yep. remains as always oblivious to most of her surroundings that's fair i gotta say also if you ever decide as a person who wants to play scum and villainy to do a job lithio seems genuinely horrible like all of these <laughs> things are written in the book they're all just right there they're like psychic ice palace who is definitely haunted uh giant gas caves underneath the ground huge space seals these are all just standard plays for things you can do on the planet lithio Right. Especially if it was me, I would just turn the page in the rule book and go to the next planet. <laughs> and some of the other fun encounters you could have. Some of these places are like paradise planets, and you could just like walk around stealing stuff all day and like <laughs> under like nice hot Floridian sun. And I chose this one for you all. So. <laughs> um, Thanks. Yeah, you know, if I had the chance to pick something haunted that was covered in ice, I would definitely pick that again. Hmm. So, at, at this our scum and villainy one shot, I'm gonna go ahead and stop running the game here but i do want to know before we throw to our normal like outros how you guys felt it was in terms of playing the game how you all communicated or felt like the rule set went so let's start with blue box because on the overlay you're directly under me how easy hard was this for you to to grapple with and play um i it was easier than i expected i had watched the previous episodes and i did a little reading up uh in the past few days um basically once i got into the flow of it it was like i said easier than i expected i liked it i might try to uh get my home friends to try scum and billing at some point cool well i'm glad you had uh, an easy time picking up the rules that's good to hear and how about for you joshua how did it go for you yeah um <clears throat> i feel like uh once i started like reading um the instructions that we had put together in order to create a, a fairly easy um i had one or two questions but but we got them figured out um quite pretty quickly here. Um, it's simple, it makes sense. Um, and, and I feel like, uh, like a lot of D6 systems, once you start to understand how it works, it, it's pretty simple, um, which I like, I like makes it easy to just pick up and then hop into a character and start playing. Cool. Now, the big thing the two of you missed out on in playing this game without Heavenly being here is you missed all the fabulous NPCs. I, hmm. I could not possibly compare to her way of just like naming things and making them totally oh, bizarre. Like half of her name so Sarah. I didn't do that at all. I just came up with two NPCs, a multiple like entity species and stormtroopers. So that, that seemed like plenty for me. And y'all rolled with that really well. I appreciate that. You cut yourself um, short. I love your NPCs. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't really do much this time. I just tried to come up with as many ways of having this be a bad job for you as humanly possible. So thank you all for uh, playing along and being taken advantage of. 
And I'm going to throw it over to Alice for outros. Yeah, wonderful. Um, so first of all, actually, let's uh, go back um, to um, one thing I do want to ask um, our lovely Theta and Tamarine is, did you have a favorite bit each? Like, was there a bit you love? And also, again, where can we find you? Tamarine, you want to go first? Sure. Um, yeah, I, I I feel like we had a, a series of unfortunate events up until we we landed um, and and uh, started interacting with the uh, space police there towards the end. Um, uh, and and I, I kind of liked just that like comedy of errors leading up to that point where it was like, hey, we've got a good idea. It's gone terribly wrong. We've got a great idea. It's gone terribly wrong. Um, so I, I, I enjoy that. I think there's something uh, really fun about failing magnificently. Um, so that, that, that was my favorite, I think, bit, I think. Um, again, uh, my name is Josh. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Joshua M. Simons. Um, I, I usually tweet about uh, D&D, um, but, but I'm trying to uh, expand my, my knowledge in terms of tabletop games, and this has been a great introduction. So thank you. Wonderful, thank you. And lovely blue box, Tyra. All right, um, I think my favorite bit was probably the uh, the rocket digging into the snow, into the gas caves that definitely caught me off guard. Um, <laughs> and it was all my fault. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Blue Box Pirate. I mostly tweet about Dungeons & Dragons stuff as well. I'm really excited that this was my first time doing the online gaming, and I hope to have many more in the future. And that's that's about it. Awesome. Wonderful. Um, Hans, what about you? Um, I had a lot of fun running this game because you guys had such creative ways of handling all of these things that were coming up. It was just a lot of fun for me. Um, I, I don't know if I had a favorite bit. Honestly, I like the whole game. I'm thinking real hard. Yeah, I think everything was great. Maybe taking all of the stuff from the tiki bar at the end, I was particularly <laughs> touched by that. Good tiki bar. Yeah. Also, definitely, uh, I'm going to shout out Hans's game here. The dragon riding is easy, isn't it? Because I've played it and it's really, really good fun. I'm going to put a link in chat. For it now. You, you could do so, that, thanks. Yeah, there will eventually that. be another version with some more goal oriented stuff that I'm working on. Mm, I love it though. So definitely go check that out. Um, yes, I'm Alice and White Rabbit Pick. I do have a Patreon, which, yes, I remembered. I'm getting better very slowly. Um, so please check that out. Um, otherwise, the links that are coming up in chat now uh, we have a Discord. Um, please go check out the chat room for this one in particular and let us know what you thought because we love this game. We love the shenanigans that happen in this game. Um, also, uh, YouTube. Um, if you've missed out on anything, we have playlists for all of our games that you can catch up on. A huge, huge thank you to our wonderful sponsors who we couldn't do this without in the form of Hero Forge, whose Kickstarter has just blown everything out the water with colored minis. It's amazing. And more and more stuff is being unlocked. So please go check that out. Also, the wonderful Mage Hand Press, which is another space oriented game. If you like DD in space, definitely go check them out. It's got other races, other classes. It's amazing. Um, and also the Deck of Mini, um, who did the Deck of Mini um, things, the magic moving spell cards, and also Humblewood, where you can play as mice and birds and out. All of it is wonderful. It's very wholesome. Otherwise, keep evoking emotions, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Check out Alice's Patreon. <laughs>